I'll call the uh, Nottingham Board of Selectmen meeting to order for January 11, 2016. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Glad to see you all. Um, we're going to open the meeting uh, sort of out of order a little bit, and then we'll get to the CIP. We have a uh, volunteer for trustee of the trust funds, Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Hello. Come right up here. Okay. And right there's good. Yeah. 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 Um, this is Joanne Stamoulis. Yes. I did it right. Um, and the uh, Board of Selectmen wanted to have a few words with you. All right. Um, part of your, your qualifications, would you like to discuss that? My qualifications? Um, <clears throat> well, I did send um, Chris uh, a letter um, stating my qualifications. I uh, have had various careers, started as um, uh, an employee for a major airline continued with a degree in architecture, mm -hmm. and then um, went back to school for a degree, a master's in education. Uh, I did teach elementary school in the New Hampshire school system for 15 years, and I'm now retired. Wonderful. Lucky you. Lucky you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> How long have you been a member of our community? Uh, 16 years. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I looked at your resume. It looked good. Mm -hmm. looked very nice. Mm -hmm. Do any of the other selectmen have any? I, I, I think that given given one of the emails that we received, we should probably explain how the policy changed, why, why we invited you here. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we made a we made a decision almost a year ago that um, whenever somebody wanted to um, come on to a, a committee or, or a group that we would um, ask them to come and, and talk to us I um, see. for a couple of reasons. One is so that we get to know you and you get to know us, but also so that um, we do a level of diligence to make sure that, you know, um, who's coming on is somebody that is comfortable with us and we're comfortable with them as well. Okay. So you're not the first one that this has happened to. Okay. Okay. And, and I know that there's been some um, some concern over timing and whatnot, but, but we need to keep in mind that we had the holidays and, right. and all that. Um, but I, I didn't want you to think at all that you were being singled out in any way, shape, or form. You know, okay, just, thank you. Just two weeks ago, um, we had a visit from, what was she? Um, Sheila. From Sheila as um, a deputy deputy um, treasurer. Foss. Right. Sheila Foss. De right? Sheila yeah. Foss, yeah. 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 So, so th this goes on on a continual basis. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, so I just I'd like to know what I'd like to just hear what your understanding of the commitment to the role is. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding, I um, would be required to go um, to meetings one uh, to four times or maybe more uh, times a year, and that during that meeting uh, we would be uh, writing checks and seeing to the town's business. Uh, I understand that it would be po might be possible that I would take the meeting notes as I'm learning about this position. And um, there are there there are resources as well, mm -hmm. um, which you'd be able to access online from New Hampshire Municipal Association. They have good publications on every single position that a town holds. And the town of Nottingham is a member of that. Right. So it's NHMA. Okay, New, New I'll Hampshire, look into that. Thank yeah, you. New Hampshire yeah. Municipal Association. Okay. Um, and if there's anything that this um, body can do for you, just let us know. We'd All be right. hap happy to help you, really. Okay, thank you. And I want to thank you personally, and I know the Board of Selectmen does too, for taking on this, this, um, this, this. It's a very important, yeah, the responsibility. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. This is a very important position, and so we appreciate the fact that okay. you have volunteered. Well, thank you. I, I do have the time for it now, and I do believe in giving back to my community. So 
We appreciate that. That's awesome. Okay. We really do. Thank um, you. I'll entertain a motion. Do we have the motion written? Uh, through, uh, just a point through March 2016, because this is. Is it in the signature folder? Oh. Yeah, oh, we great. have we have we have a document, but not an actual motion language, so you'll have to make it up. So I'll make a motion that that we appoint um, Joan Stamoulis. Joanne. It's Joanne. okay. It's, pronounced, it's spelled Jones. <laughs> oh, my wife's name is Jones. So yes, I that's right. I remember. Joanne Stamoulis mm -hmm. um, as trustee of the trust funds through March of 2016. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we need to do anything with that? Nope. Um, now I would like to um, recess the Board of Selectmen's meeting until later on this evening, promptly after we close the um, discussion on the CIP. So in, in effect, opening the CIP meeting. Opening it? Opening the CIP and closing, not closing, but awesome. recessing the Board of Selectmen's meeting okay. until we finish the CIP discussion tonight. Yep. All right, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now I'll open the CIP. Um, go ahead. Uh, just a couple quick things before we get to uh, fire chief um, this is a printout of what I emailed you today that shows the school CIP totals you have everything electronically already this is all this is uh, just one pages yep just one page uh, replaces the total page that you have already um, and this is something that Gene asked you all to get regarding the school budget. Um, and then just one other thing for the record, we had an email exchange that involved most, if not all of you, since your last meeting that was primarily about scheduling a workshop session at the firehouse over the, over the weekend. Um, you, do, you didn't actually have a meeting. You never had a quorum of, of people at any one time. But just to um, get in the record, we do have an email that we kind of leaked into a group email that um, we have. Well, just to put it on the record that it exists, and that's the bulk of it. And there's some also some right to know requests in that email chain, so uh, it's available if anybody wants to see it. But uh, and that is all. I have before the fire chief. I don't know if you want to set up the discussion in any sure. way. Okay, as long as you're um, done. Yep. You're done. Okay. Um, the CIP totals, as proposed, um, Chris was good enough to put them all into uh, some sort of um, understandable jargon. It um, it's interesting, especially where we just handed the uh, school draft of what it's going to, how it's going to affect the um, tax rate. So that's very important. So, um, so we got this today. Are we gonna? Is Chris gonna walk us through this? You want to do that? Yeah. It's you. The only thing that's new here is uh, the fourth line from the top, uh, fifth line from the top. School district CIP total. Um, they they submitted the worksheets and annual breakdown of uh, what their plan was, uh, and I figured you would want to see it for. To, just to put it in context of everything else so the uh, in the chart that you're looking at the gridded section at the top represents the school portion everything else you've seen before and what's the um, file that you sent us that had has that detail uh, there's one PDF that has that and then there's a, a collection of department what we call department worksheets the school used the same worksheet that you saw from our department head <coughs> uh, that breaks down the various um, components of those totals. Excuse me. Sure. <laughs> You're making fun of me. <laughs> Do we have a printout of the, what they submitted? I know it was emailed, or I think it was emailed. No, we don't. I, we can certainly get them, but uh, don't have anything printed for you. We just got those at three or four o'clock this afternoon. There were. They were, I saw them represented in something. Do you, you want us to print them and you can come back to it later in the meeting? Yeah. Okay. Where did I see the, um, I'm just trying to find that. Well, I don't know that we're actually going to go through those, right? 
Yeah, that, this is not this that's we, what they submitted. Fair enough. Fair we, enough. We, we decided early on that, that this group was going to focus on town and town only things. Right. And the only Fair reason enough. we need those totals and, is and we to figure into total. just put into our CIP. We okay. can't yeah. argue them, we can't talk about them. Well, it's, nobody, nobody's here to have a conversation. So Right, exactly. You know. Fair enough. I'm not following this with the CIP committee is supposed to look at the overall effect of capital improvements. The, CI, the school board determined that they were going to do their own CIP, and it looked like legislatively they had that that right. They did not have to be a part of the town CIP. They can have their own. I don't believe that's true, or I, I question if that's true. I, I thought one of the things I heard at the planning board was that if the town has impact fees, you have to have one CIP. Do you recall that, John? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I had heard that. My point exactly. Yeah, we would. We have been told just the opposite. From the list in the source that it was. It was at this meeting. So, so I would, I would say. I would say even at the school board meeting. I, I would say for expediency's sake, because we have a yes, a lot of whole group here. of people here with a very important topic. We'll put this off. To we should after. get on to that. Okay. But, but the point that you all are bringing up, the reason why I'm nodding my head up and down is, yeah, you're right. And yeah, that needs to be addressed and, and resolved. Okay. But again, you don't have the right people here to resolve it because it, the resolving that must include right. the school board. Right. Who, who okay. I remember distinctly saying they were not going to participate. I, let, let's let's okay. move on. Okay. Let's can move we on. carry that as an action item going forward then? Yes, please? we can. We absolutely Great. can. I agree yep. with you, Mark. Move on. But yeah. I, I don't want to abandon that. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just, okay. you know. Do we need any further walkthrough of this with with Chris before we move on to the discussion that was of the, the only point? thing that changed? Fine. A any other? No. Okay. Um, then I will invite um, the chief, uh, Jay Vilchuk, to come up and discuss um, the fire department's request for a quint, a piece of fire, a quint firefighting equipment. Evening. So, if the other folks can identify themselves at the table, that would be great for the folks at home. Okay, why don't you go first? Matt Curry, Deputy Chief. James Calderoni, full time lieutenant. Jay Vilchuk, Chief Nottingham Fire Rescue. So, so before we dive into this, because I know I know the department has put a tremendous amount of time and effort into it, um, I would ask that that this group not interrupt them during the presentation. Um, I think that what we're going to find is that there's a whole bunch of questions that we've raised in the past that, that you're going to see answers for. Um, there's a bunch of questions that you won't see answers for. And I'm going to ask that, that what this group does is allow them to go through the full presentation. Absolutely. Take down the questions that you have, and then let's methodically go okay. through them afterwards. I think that's fair yeah, that's definitely a good idea. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come back and further discuss this important topic with you all. I uh, totally understand your responsibility for fiscal conservatism and I appreciate that as a taxpayer and a resident of the town. Moving right along. As you can see from this slide, we'll start on a little levity side, slide. <clears throat> Things have changed in firefighting over the past years. This is a picture of a 1937 Mac that was part of Nottingham Fire Rescue's complement way back when. Our analysis, engine three has reached its end of life, 21 years as expected. Uh, continued full service leads to an, a risk of breakdown and escalating ma maintenance costs. The town has three options as we see, do nothing and accept the risk, purchase a quint or purchase an engine. After uh, much analysis, Nottingham Fire Rescue recommends purchasing a quint. And just to review, a quint basically equals an engine plus an aerial ladder capability. Very basically, firefighter expect to climb up the ladder, right? It's part of risk, part of it associated with the job. By the way, this is one of our firefighters. This is uh, Zach Gagnon, one of our career firefighters. If you look a little closer to this, this was actually the incident. Some of the things we mentioned before, the steel roof situation, the other firefighter here is actually here, it's Mark Pedersen, and he'd probably be glad to tell you how slippery that roof was, even with the shallow pitch it was. 
So one of the added safety benefits of the quid, as we had said before, is involves the laddering and the access to roofs that are of the metal variety for such a task as a chimney fire. It's a picture of an actual incident from 2014. Uh, at this particular time, we have two crews up on the fourth floor attacking the fire. Uh, a mutual aid crew was assigned the task of venting the roof, and due to slippery conditions, uh, that was never attained at that time. It was just uh, wasn't physically possible at the time. As you can see, the fire had self-vented around the chimney area. Okay. That was a hazardous situation. I have another picture to show you some of the, uh, some of the, uh, some more pictures associated with this particular incident. You got to remember that, and I don't want to get into too much detail. At this point, that fourth floor is filled with uh, unburned combustible, unburned. unburned fuel in the form of smoke that could flash over, and that's one of the things we're trying to avoid. That could be a catastrophic event. That's the need for, for venting, okay. This picture was taken shortly after when those crews were evacuated. You could see that the fire extended over their head to the roof area. The purpose of this film, this photo, is to illustrate that you see in the eave area, with the use of a master stream device, a nozzle that comes with a quint, it's attached to the ladder device. The fire could have been extinguished or possibly extinguished. It would have been attacked remotely from the operator position of the quint. Also, I want to illustrate there's a 24-foot ground ladder that's reaching, which is really the third floor balcony. Doesn't re does not provide adequate escape capabilities. Interior shot. Those two crews, the, the uh, primary attack and the backup crew had to maneuver through structure like this up to the fourth floor. One way in, one way out, there's, there's a stairway on the left-hand side. Uh, I do not have an action shot, but this is a, an actual incident in the town that occurred. This is the aftermath of a, a fire in town. And the reason I'm showing you this is uh, it's our belief that a, a quint may have been beneficial in uh, providing a little added, uh, little added property preservation uh, for this incident, and I'll show you why. Oh, I'll get to it in a, in a second. This is a typical way. I think I showed it to you before. Uh, without a quint, uh, the crew is sent to the roof using a ground ladder most likely be the 35 foot ground ladder to the right where they transition to a roof ladder and vent the roof from that roof ladder position, okay? The venting is done, and I don't wanna get again too much of, of venting is done to uh, provide a path for those ga gases to escape. And it also increases the survivability rate if there are any victims inside there, because you're able. The venting has to be coordinated with the interior attack at the same time too because you don't want to overwhelm that area with steam. If you apply, you know, uh, attack the fire, you put water on the fire, it turns to steam, you need to have a path to be able to have that, that steam escape where you're, you, you may be causing more damage than to victims. This is a file photo. This was a recent, this was not a Nottingham event. This was about a week or so ago, somewhere in central New Hampshire. I don't remember the name of the town. A quint with an aerial device would be able to attack the bulk of the fire that's shown on the gable end, the right-hand side facing, facing you. Uh, that aerial device would be able to attack that bulk of that fire there, and maybe provide uh, some sort of property protection. I also want to show you to the right, over by the tree line, you can see like a faint uh, spray over there. That's actually I'm trying to attack the fire with a hand line from the ground, and that is minimal effectiveness, if any, if you could see, okay? So, uh, another added concern, danger, are the uh, addition of photo, 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 voltaic cells to roofing components. I'm sure many people in, in the audience or uh, at the panel have received offers from companies to place these uh, 
these uh, solar powered panels on their roofing components. Uh, just recently, I had two lieutenants, uh, Lieutenant Ross and Lieutenant Vilchuk, attend a fire academy class on the dangers of this, uh, this new technology. Not only does it provide a slip hazard, trying to access the roof, but there's also an electrical hazard associated with trying to, trying to ladder a roof with those panels. Uh, through work, uh, working uh, my staff and the building inspector, we have a list of five, five, uh, five, five new installations in the calendar year 2015 in Nottingham. We're trying to get a list of every house that has them so we could uh, at least have some kind of dispatcher's warning associated with it so we know about it in advance. But that's, the, that's upcoming technology you're going to see more of that presents a danger to, uh, to the firefighters. An existing danger concern. Uh, as you can tell, this is Nottingham School. Most of Nottingham School is uh, constructed with uh, lightweight trusses. You see the example down the lower left-hand corner. They use gusset plates. Uh, those type of structural members are, are known, they're notoriously for failing in a short amount of time. Uh, the areas that these provide, you know, the roof structure for, the main hallway, the area over the classrooms, they're long, long areas. I don't know who's been up there recently. There's also several heating devices, propane-fed heating devices in the overhead. If there was a fire up in the attic area caused by one of those heating devices, uh, we would not be able to attack it from the interior. It would have to be attacked from the roof area. And like I said, the, uh, this, the, uh, the survival time of that 10 minutes, ten minutes uh, of a uh, truss roof. That type of construction is not unique to the school. It's what you see in most new construction uh, because of the economy that sort of things. So that, that's part of the reason why, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the new hazards, hazards that are evolving within the town of Nottingham, uh, lightweight construction, truss roofs, that sort of stuff. And that's, that's another reason why we're, we're here to, uh, uh, you know, present our, our position on why there's a requirement for a quint type apparatus. Some background information. Uh, members of, of the committee, uh, members of the committee included myself, Deputy Chief Curry, the chairperson was Lieutenant Calderoni, Chris Robinson in, in the audience, and Bob Boston. I don't know if Bob came in, he works down south, so it takes him a while to get here. Uh, we're members of the committee. The committee's met formally approximately 10 times since 2014. Our first demo was back in 19 September of 2014. We spent countless hours reviewing specs, contacting vendors, interfacing with other departments, and uh, you know this concept and this was originally discussed during the CIP, the 2014 CIP uh, cycle. Yes, it was. Okay. Okay. So bring it back to options here. Summary of options. Uh, option one, the do nothing option, is engine three, the way it is. Uh, we do nothing, purchase no, no new equipment. Uh, second option is purchase a new quint and then a new engine instead of a quint. You look, I go into more detail in, in each one of these slides. You take a look across. The economic is uh, unknown from, uh, from the do nothing portion to approximately $750,000 for a quint to approximately $500,000 for a new engine. Uh, you take a line on life safety, no change, with uh, keeping engine three the way it is right now as a, as a secondary piece, uh, increase life safety with a new quint and increase life safety with a new engine. Property preservation, no change, increase to no change. Access, no change. I offered that the, uh, the quint would have the same property access as, uh, as an engine or a tanker, and no change for a new engine. Incident management, uh, same for engine three, Improved with a quint, same with a new engine. Operators uh, for engine three, it's one driver pump operator. Uh, this is to the scene. One driver pump operator for a new quint and one driver pump operator for a new engine. There is no changes, no, no difference there. On scene, uh, engine three would remain with that driver pump operator configuration uh, for a quint. It'd be a driver, pump operator, and a ladder operator, still one person, still one person. 
a new engine would still remain with one person as a driver pump operator. Functionality, as you can tell, engine three, there would be no change. Uh, a new quint would provide us with new functionality and a new engine would be no change in functionality. Training, you know, the initial uh, vendor factory training, none for engine three, it's existing, it's a 21 year old piece. Uh, for a new quint, there would be more than an engine. I think we discussed it before that we're looking at four days of uh, in-house training with the vendor for a ladder, for, an in, for a, a quint, excuse me. And the new engine would be uh, the same as the previous engine, which would be one or two days of uh, in-house training. I, last time I think it was around a day and a half, two days. Okay. Uh, for ongoing training, no change in engine three. It's part of our annual training plan. And that would be the same thing for a quint and a new engine. We'd add it to our annual training plan and be part of our standard operating procedures to, to be familiar with its, with, its, uh, with its features. Maintenance unknown on engine three, the area corrective. For a quint, uh, any type of maintenance will be added to our, our plan and a new engine will be added to our standard operating plan for maintenance. Bottom line, uh, $250,000 Delta buys increased firefighter safety and increased property preservation. The Delta is between the estimated cost of a new engine and the estimated cost of a new quint. We'll get into more detail. Uh, again, engine three, new quint, and new engine portion. We, we, we talked about the new cost, the cost of a new piece. Not, a, not, not applicable for an engine three, uh, 750 for the quint, 500 for a new engine. Capital reserve, no impact to the capital reserve fund uh, with engine three. Uh, we'd recommend using the $320,000 from the capital reserve to be applied to the purchase of the new quint and likewise for a new engine. The amount to be financed would be nothing for engine three since we own it. A uh, new quint would be $430,000 financed, a new engine $180,000 financed. The annual payments, nothing engine three again because it's owned. Uh, I'll give you an asterisk and we'll talk down the bottom. For an annual payment, what our strategy be for a new quint would be not to exceed $100,000 for a year and likewise for a new engine. Repair costs, and these are all uh, uh, unknown for engine three because we can't predict it at this point. Uh, any kind of repair costs, obviously, with a new piece will be covered under warranty. So, the payment strategy I want to highlight right here it, it's, it's, it's our belief and our proposal that there will be no increased tax burden over, over what, what, we've, uh, what we've had in the past years. Uh, we're looking for the total payment of a new quint uh, to include new capital reserve funds and it not to exceed 100k a year okay so the total payment plus the capital reserves would keep it to less than hundred thousand dollars a year this is consistent with our history if you take a look over the past years uh, 2015 there were ninety nine thousand uh, dollars invested in fire department apparatus, 50,000 in capital reserve and 49 in a utility vehicle. As you go back, you'll see the payment structure for engine two was there, 89, 87, there were 30, in the 37, $38,000 range for engine two while we were making payments on engine. At the same time, there was $50,000 being applied to the capital reserve fund, so, okay. So again, this is consistent with our original intent of the capital reserve fund, which, I don't believe the capital reserve fund was ever intended to pay for the full price of a new piece, but it was to offset, offset that, uh, offset the initial cost of it. Life safety comparison this is kind of a short slide. What I did is I, uh, I plagiarized what Exeter, New Hampshire Fire Department has uh, for description of, of their ladder, which is actually a quint right now. Uh, ladder trucks are a key piece of equipment for a town's fire protection. Its main purpose is to save lives. Ladder truck provides a solid work platform for firefighters to rescue trapped occupants, provides safer condition to operate on a roof, ventilates smoke and hazardous gases through roofs, keeps the firefighters safe and mitigates damage in the scene of a building fire. So I offer that as a, as a comparison for a new quint. No change on engine three or new engine. 
property preservation. I'm not going to reread it again, but I think it's captured in the, the quote from uh, Chief Como at Exeter Fire. Property access comparison, I'm going to offer no change. In the upper left hand side of the screen is uh, Nottingham Tanker 1. The last time I gave you feet and inches, they've been rounded up to the next nearest feet, so I don't want to be, okay? So Tanker 1 is 34 feet in length. Uh, on the upper right, that is Lee's new Tanker 3, which they're running as a first two engine. That is 36 feet in length, okay? Uh, on the lower left is Epping's engine, I don't know if it's two, it's engine three, engine three. That's been in service about two years. The length of that engine is 39 feet. Lee Tanker three is their primary mutual aid piece. Engine three for Epping is a primary mutual aid piece. Those pieces do come to our town. Uh, I can't say the Lee has been here, it's only been in service about two weeks, but it, Epping's engine has been in town, it has been town. Okay, in the lower right is uh, an example of of, uh, of uh, a quint with uh, I don't know 75, 80 foot ladder, aerial device on. It's the one that Chester has, and again we rounded it up with 36 feet, 10 inches bumper to bumper for 37 feet. I'm just trying to give a comparison in, in size here. So compared to our present fleet, there you go. Our engine two is 33 feet. Our Tank one is 34 feet, and again, uh, an example of specimen size is 37 feet. So we're not we're not looking, uh, you know, just to put that uh, put that ruler by the fish, so to say. See, okay. Yeah. Incident management. Uh, the big change here would be a quint. We're improved in the incident management area. I consider a quint to be a force multiplier. Explain why. Uh, with an engine, our 35-foot ground ladder comes on engine three per presently. It takes three people to raise that ladder realistically. It takes one person to climb and gain access. At the same time, there's one person, one firefighter that's married to the ladder to stabilize it. So it, give you an idea of the manpower applied. For an aerial ladder, it takes one person to raise, obviously, because it's hydraulically controlled, and one person to climb. Okay, so. You're, you're freeing up that one person that's uh, that, that's that's stuck footing the ladder, okay, which is a dangerous position. Functionality, added ladder capability. Uh, an aerial ladder gives us a safe roof access. It also gives us remote control master stream. What I'm saying is there is a large diameter nozzle at the tip of, of the ladder that is remotely controlled, depends on which one, but from the platform, from the operator's position, uh, that changes both the stream pattern and also the position of it. So that, that the water can be directed remotely from the truck uh, to the tip of the ladder or anywhere in between. It becomes helpful in attic fire situations. Uh, there, it also has this, it has a capability that if you had to do a a uh, primary search for victims on say a third floor, second floor, multi-floor, and the fire is on the floor below, you can, you can uh, position a nozzle to attack the fire on the floor below uh, the fire floor, okay, uh, without having to put firefighters in. You can dampen it down at least, okay. It's remote controlled, provides added safety. There's two pictures that I was supposed to add here, but time ran out. One is of that device, uh, the other was uh, uh, how, to, how, a, how a quint would provide safe roof access as opposed to using the attic ladder and ground ladder for venting. In the lower right hand corner uh, is a picture just recently, the flooding out in the Midwest. There's, there's a quint slash ladder aerial device that's being used to rescue, uh, perform a water rescue in a, in, a, in a river right there. So you know, there's added capabilities. Rope rescue also, yep. This is uh, engine three, it's a 1995 E1. Uh, its overall length is 32 feet. It carries 1,000 gallons of water. It has a 1,250 gallon per minute pump. And it is our 35 foot ladder uh, engine. It carries our 35 foot ladder. What do we do with engine three? Separate discussion many time, but it's been in service 20, 21 years. 
Assuming that uh, the town agrees to purchase a replacement, the options are to sell. Street value is less than 10,000, and that's that's a that's a lot right there. If we went out and open bid, it would be based on experience, a few thousand dollars. The 10K is possibly a consignment sale. Okay, so that's where that number comes from. Uh, if we retained it, which I believe it provides more value to us that way, we could use it as a primary. Uh, primary vehicle for motor vehicle accidents it would be the piece that would be running out in inclement weather uh, it would house our our, our uh, extrication tools like it does presently and we could reassess its uh, capabilities or use on a yearly basis so back to the summary uh, I'm not gonna read it we're back to the same if that that was the basis for our summary of options and again, the bottom line is that we're not talking about it. We're not talking about the 750 Delta right now. If we went option two or option three, there's a $250,000 Delta between a new engine and a Quint. Okay. Uh, impact. Delaying the impact will will, uh, will cause two warrants in fiscal year 17. We all know our SCBAs are reaching the end of life. Uh, 18 is believe is when in, in the CIP that was submitted was break it up over two years uh, delaying it a year would would force us to have another large uh, warrant article on the fiscal year 17 our recommendation is that the Board of Selectmen add a quint to the warrant article and let the tax makers make the taxpayers make the decision uh, any delays the CI plan uh, for A1 replacing SCBA replacement. The end of life for the SCBAs and also Ambulance 1 potentially in uh, 2017, which I want to caveat the ambulance is covered by the uh, ambulance fund. So taxpayer impact would not, we would not impact taxpayers at that point. I want to thank you. I hope that was. I have to commend you for that. That was excellent. That was the kind of information that we were looking for. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. I appreciate it. appreciate the opportunity to hopefully discuss it. I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so, again, just mostly just for trying to, my understanding, because I don't know anything about um, firefighting. So when you talk about property preservation, it, is that also about, you know, trying to keep fires from spreading? Absolutely. That, that's, it's not just about that individual structure it's about protecting the entire area protecting the area and also protecting the undamaged areas of that house from spreading within within that structure if all at all possible uh, save the unburned areas save uh, personal property of uh, yeah. uh, you know the, the irreplaceable items okay? okay we take measures typically uh, trying to uh, use salvage covers and we, we don't try to destroy anything that's for sure when we uh, uh, it, it's we don't destroy things that's why we use thermal imaging cameras and things like that okay um, the other question I had was back on the economic uh, slide the economic comparison and um, I'm not a math genius but I was just trying to figure out you basically what you're showing is that the the year to year cost is going to be the same because you want to keep it at the hundred thousand right. But if we're talking about financing, it's it's just going to be two and a half years longer for that financing than if we went for and for a new engine, for example, because it's the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's just the the life of the financing is a little bit longer than typical. Okay. Or yes. <laughs> 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 yes. So I, I just I think that, I think that that's an that may be an important point to add to that slide okay. only because you know the idea is you're trying to level it at, at 100k in a year mm -hmm. in my mind two and a half years isn't a lot of additional time that's so that's why i think that that would be a worthwhile point for that slide the, the other way that you can look at the 250,000 delta and and um I, I don't think it was in the slides at all but you do some quick math over a 20 year period you're talking about twelve thousand five hundred dollars a year and i know there's interest associated with it and whatnot so it'll be a bit higher but you're talking about twelve thousand five hundred a year to maybe eighteen thousand a year difference um, between 
staying with the same kind of capabilities that the team has today and increasing the capabilities with the Quint, right? And if that were to save one person's life, I think it's probably, you know, I didn't, not that you want to over-dramatize that, but right. we, we really are, for me, seeing the pictures of what our fire personnel are doing today yep. with respect to roof access is, um, it, it, is uh, really telling, you know. I think that this would be a good presentation at town meeting with the slight improvement that um, Donna recommended. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you done? Yeah, that was all I had. Uh, Jean asked to... Yeah, on the, on the subject of interest, which I don't know, I didn't quite follow you, but that amount, regardless of whether it would be for the new Quint or the new engine, would be increased by... 250. How much? Was it 250, Jay? 250. Yeah, the interest. the interest because when you when you borrow that oh. there's yeah. going to be a, mm -hmm. a burden of principal paying off yeah. the principal and then paying off the interest and the interest looks like it's going to be i don't know what we can borrow money at we modeled i think six percent on what you have there um which we usually we don't, don't pay very yeah seldom it's as um, high as six percent we don't I mean, we just made contact with the bond bank to get so things started so we don't know but to work a model on it five percent would be, be a good average. Yeah. Low average. Yeah. So should that not be added to that to show the total cost of that option out of the three? We we can estimate, but we won't know what rate the bond goes out at until so it happens. June. If we go, you know, if we were to go in June or something, you won't know. You really don't know. So we'll we'll have to take a guess at what that will be. But right, but that adds to the overall cost. Is the yeah. Capital, the, the source of the funds will be capital reserve. 320K the, capital reserve deltas. The to augment that to come up with the total purchase price will be a loan. And with the loan comes interest. So those three, basically those three things determine the total price of doing it. I think that's a money. slide maybe we should prepare. You, you have in your... Um, in your original CIP, there's a the interest is cooked in there at, at five or six for the duration. Um, what, does that, what does that number come out to? Uh, 82, 83,000 a year off the top of my head. Um, on the quint. On the quint. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what, and then what would it have been? What would it be on the if it was just a replacement? Of the um, well, divide 250 by six and shave a little interest. So. How many uses um, the payment schedule on that? Six. Six. The, the difference is going to be summers around fifteen to eighteen thousand a year. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's in that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's twelve five straight line. Then you put the interest on it. It's going to be fifteen, maybe eighteen, depending on what the interest rate says. That that might be a little bit generous actually, but yeah. it'll be summers in that range. Another question for me. You should certainly on, can on money. Uh, Grants haven't been investigated yet. Will they be investigated? Not, not for the purchase of this piece. Sorry. Not for the purchase of this piece. Grants will be investigated for the SCBAs, but not for purchase of the piece. Uh, grant money has 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 dry, has uh, dried up somewhat over the past few years. The last neighboring department that I'm aware of that was successful was Lee for heavy rescue back right after the 9/11. Uh, but FEMA, FEMA, according to their website, still has money and still is doing grants. So what would be the harm in applying for one or two? As far as uh, the grants for this purchase, it would not be feasible because of the time constraints. Uh, it's typically you have a short window of about 30 to 90 days to put in for a grant, and then you don't hear a response for almost six to eight months from FEMA. So you're talking going to be planning about a year and a half, two years in advance for FEMA grants. We could definitely uh, use that for, for a future purchase, but it wouldn't be feasible for this apparatus. Well, actually, actually, you could do the both of them in parallel. And, and if the grant did come through, then you could use it to offset. Right. So yeah. I, don't think that, I don't think that they go in serial. I don't think that, that one, I don't think you have the time constraint from that perspective. I think that if there is grant money available, then, then it would make sense to give it a shot. 
investigate what their criteria and property even processes. after even after the town has, has agreed to pay for it and we've bought it you can yeah. still apply for the grant sure why not okay why not you gotta check out and see what it see yeah what they i are. don't know what the constraints are yeah, you see what yeah. Right. Yeah. i don't know whether it's just bluster on the fema site saying we have money available. yeah could be that too but without investigating that and getting turned down yeah could you guys make you sure you understand. do that yeah okay i think we have more opportunity with the the afg grant for for PACs based on history in the area yeah. here too so that's a separate issue but I just want to let you know that that is one of our plans for the SCBA replacement is to investigate grant opportunities I think Barrington just I said that before Barrington this past year got a grant for SCBAs and you're going to pursue that definitely correct excellent Glad to hear that. yes we haven't talked or seen a presentation on buying used and thank you for I think Almost all of us went to the fire station, and everything is pretty ship shape over there. Thank you. Folks do a good job. Um, but I'm still going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, used is a concept that some departments have been successful doing, some departments have said they weren't successful. Is it worth exploring when you can buy one for about half the price used? I have, I'll, I'll amend, that, amend that to say that I've talked with a town uh, about this size who bought a used and paid, um, they bought it and then had it completely refurbished. I don't know the name of the company in Connecticut, but perhaps you folks do. And they brought it in for less than 400000 and they're satisfied with a piece of equipment. So what are your thoughts on that? Certainly a demo would be entertained, and I'm going to talk about demo first because you bring it up. Uh, some a town in the area has had great success in purchasing a demo piece it was Chester uh, the opportunity for getting a demo has to be the right place at the right time typically the manufacturers don't have a lot of them floating around they build one or two for nationwide parade it around the country and then sell it when the next model comes out the demo would be entertainable based on it filled our requirements and it met our economic constraints as far as a used one goes uh, I think I think a used piece, uh, the risk associated with, with purchasing a used piece is too great. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not comfortable with you know spending four hundred five hundred thousand dollars. I wouldn't ask on a used piece because th these pieces are purchased for a reason. And again, when they're let go, they're let go for a reason. A, a cross section of those used. Uh, piece of apparatus have been originally purchased by a city and as we discussed before they get they get used pretty hard in the city they get turned over to a suburban type department you know and some of them are maybe into their third life span right here I, I certainly I, I don't think uh, the age uh, several of them are, are, are prior to uh, NFPA 1901 uh, 2009 version which is We've, we're beyond there as far as safety goes for a firefighter. Uh, the, 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 the department that you quote, uh, I don't think it was an apples and apples con comparison, and we could talk offline about it too. That, that, uh, so is that off the table? Used? I, I, from where I, from where I sit, uh, I, I don't recommend we, we entertain a used piece of this type that's for sure am I still on you're still on the one of my concerns I've s talked about the chief with before is uh, the care and feeding of the equipment as it sits uh, it sits a lot I was uh, happy to see during a visit James showed me around you did too that there's a daily check sheet for essential stuff I didn't ask to to see more detailed stuff but there seems to be you can correct me but let me rephrase it is there a maintenance program PM so-called PM a preventative maintenance program in place for any of the equipment right now that requires periodic inspections other than getting this a sticker and what I mean by periodics is you and I also talked about there are many components that come together from different manufacturers to make this custom built engine and, and with that there comes different warranties and with that comes different maintenance recommendations I think 
So, how am I going to be pleased when I see the new quint rolled in that it's going to be taken care of along the lines of what the manufacturer recommends? Or am I not? I think this is something that Jay can think about and probably be better discussed at town meeting. Okay. I, yep. I'm just bringing it up. Yep. Um, and, and I also think that we need to keep the, the focus of this conversation on, on, on uh, the capital improvement proposal regarding Quint, new engine, or do nothing. Mm. I, I think that what you're bringing up are some valid things. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that they're operational in nature. And I know that you got a strong background in that. And I think that um, a collaboration between you and the and the department would would actually uh, uh, be uh, probably very helpful. I think you I think you'll learn a lot a lot of things. I think, Chief, you guys will, will learn some things. So I'd like to see that happen. And it would be a good preparation for town meeting. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Well, let me go back to the purchase of the Quint and the money. This is, who makes. If this were to pass as a warrant article, who, who makes the decision of, out of all these manufacturers, which the chief supplied numerous manuals and books on, mm -hmm. and, and it's, a, it's a, uh, a choice of which one you buy, and that choice may be influenced by people that you know in the industry or, or uh, price. Mm -hmm. So who would make that? Who would act on the Warren article? Who is the agent for expending the funds? Number one and number two is how would you determine what's the best source of, of this three quarters of a million dollar purchase? Right now, it would be a, a decision made by the committee, the uh, Quint committee that we have. Uh, the decision is based on attributes, and uh, we're using a spreadsheet type. I could probably show you an example that identifies the capabilities, the price. Uh, the features of each each piece uh, we're prepared we're prepared to make a written recommendation to the Board of Selectmen within four weeks of town meeting if it passed with a recommendation and rationale of why uh, you know based on on uh, such things as cost uh, value reputation experience with uh, you know service sort of like we do with other pieces that we've purchased ambulance in the past that sort of stuff that that's consistent with so for example this past year we approved a, um, a new dump truck yep. um, and um, Johnny brought forward um, three options to us one was a Mac and one was an internet were two inter two were internationals or one was an international and one was, international. one was at least one was international the other one I'm not quite sure what it was and then there was a Mac and then um, and then we we kind of had a he had a recommendation and then you we know, had recommendations and bids. And bids, right. yeah. Right. And we determined from that. So it ends up being a kind of a, it was an RFP process. That Sounds good. Right. Speaking of RFPs, I've seen several RFPs online, they're anywhere from 10 to 124 pages mm -hmm. for an RFP. Oh my God, who's going to write that? Or does the manufacturer you select coach you through writing it for that manufacturer? We took the uh, functional type approach. We ran, wrote a functional RFP, sort of like what the federal government uses now, where we're not gonna we're not gonna design it for them because each one has a different unique feature to them, and this is based on previous experience. We don't tell them how to build them. What we tell them in in, in a in a functional term, we're looking for an aerial device that has 75 to 100 feet reach, 400 to 600 gallons, so much compartment capability, uh, size of the engine, size of the pump. What, if there's any type of specifics like lighting, one LED lighting, we would identify it as LED lighting. If we have a preference on a manufacturer, it would be a X manufacturer pump installed, and let the uh, let let the uh, let the vendor put together that specification for that piece. The quid okay. at a fire scene wouldn't stand alone for long. Hopefully, it'd have a tanker show up. Correct. Second do would be. And, and is that a standard? Connection from tanker. Oh, tanker. absolutely. So we, I mean, we, things like that, and I don't know what else would interplay with existing equipment. But there is things things that used to be a problem before were, were threaded connections. <coughs> We've kind of got away from that. It's standardized. Our LDH hose is all uh, it's, it's male female 
uh, Stortz connections. We use a four inch. Most of our neighbors use four inch. There are a couple that use five inch. We have adapters to make it fit. Between. So the short answer is it's, it's all considered. Covered. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's that's the that's one of the lowest risk items there, sir. For, for people that might be interested in, the, um, you and I have talked. About it. I don't want to quote the time, but what do you suspect the delivery time to be for the benefit of? Close to a year, 300 and some days, I think was it's, it. Yeah. It's mostly dependent on manufacturer, yes. but you can pretty much bank on anywhere from 290 days to 345-ish, I've seen them. So it would be a year? About a year, mm -hmm. yeah. And so are we, are we budgeting for the right year then? If, if it runs into the next year, there would have to be an encumbrance. Ah. If if Sounds the money good. doesn't get spent, if we have a contract and yeah. the money has not got spent, there would be an encumbrance okay. into the following year. In advance. Um, you have to pay in advance. No, no, I think we've done that before with interest. I don't want to get into. I don't. Yeah, let's not. Let's not. Okay. So, any more? Any more, Gene? Give me a moment, please. Can John? John, do you have anything to ask? This is what the chief feels is best for the town, and the fire department feels best for the town. Put the article up in front of the uh, okay. the people of the town. Are you are you good? Um, good? In our in our minutes from the last meeting, we talked about a hundred a hundred and fifteen foot ladder. Now we're thinking of a eighty five. Seventy seventy to eighty somewhere in that area. Is there a big price difference for and the length of the, length of the apparatus? Plus, there's a price difference. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. There is. I'm, I'm concerned that a hundred foot may be a little too much for us. Okay. Um, I and and to, to, to reaffirm that there is, there is parking there. Uh, Chief walked through the parking area and um, shuffled some equipment around. And engine three will go to, will stay in front. Engine three will go in the back row. We'll go in the back row. We're going even side. And equipment will go in front. Yep. And there is space for it. It's about three feet longer than existing. In the tanker, correct. Yeah. The tanker. Yep. Yeah, that was that was important to me that we had a place to put it without. Yes. having to add on to the fire station or leave any of our equipment outside so that was really important the and i have to thank the um, firefighters calderon and bohart for helping me on friday it was was wonderful they were very very helpful one last question <laughs> oh sorry that's okay does, does uh, that price include all the accessories such as ladders hoses Etc. 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 Or La ladders are included in there at 130, 35 feet complement of ladders. I want to get the right number of feet. 135. 135 with an ISO compliant. We have rack hose to make up the hose. Uh, the rest Sorry. of the we, we have rack hose. We have we have rack hose. I don't know what a rack hose is. Rack hose. We have hose. Hose. Yes. We have a supply of extra. Yes. Extra hose. So you're yes. going to use some of your supply to help the truck, and you'll still have sufficient reserve. Correct. The, the number we have, the number we is an in-service. The number we provide is an in-service. No. What other accessories? So some trucks come with a SCB. We we have SCBAs. We can restructure our SCBAs. Uh, we have two that are used for training purposes that can be put in service right now. We use them for training. So they're included in the 2017. You know at those numbers. So I'm, I'm sure you know all the accessories that go with it. Yep. And my question is just simple then. Is it included in the price? Some of them are included in the price. We're looking at probably buying three nozzles and we're going to have to buy a, a mobile radio for it. But it's included in that 750 k That Yes. So say it that way yes. so that you don't cause confusion. Yes. The 750 k is all in. It's an in-service okay. price. It's in-service, yes. all in. Yes. It is, yes. you know. There's no, we're, no. That was my, so the, that was the my truck question, itself, right? The truck itself is going to be... Less right. than that. Is, is less than that, right? My question is, is it fully outfitted with radios and that sort of thing? It does not come with a radio. It comes with, uh, but it is depends that on included? the manufacturer, it comes with... In, some of them in come the with, 750, does that include the radios? Yes, yeah, 750 is the in-service yes. price. That's, okay. Yes. Yes. All lettered and ready to go. In-service, yes. <laughs> Okay, that's all I wanted to yes. hear. Yes, yes. <laughs> it has your personal guarantee. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Confident that we do it for it's in the minutes. It's that's in good. the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the point is, if the Warren article says 750, it, right. yeah. then, it is what it is. then, then that's, by definition, it. that's yeah. what it'll be. And if they can't find one that fits that bill in, in total for that, then it doesn't, get, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that year. You know. It has to come back. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think we're finished asking questions. Okay. Um, 
I thank you all very, very much for coming here, and you're welcome to stay while we deliberate. Um, but I think that the deliberation from this point on is going to be between the Board of Selectmen and, and, and the CIP as well, CIP committee. Is that okay with you guys? It's okay. Does anybody else from the audience have anything they wanted to add? Or? You're welcome to stay. Thank you very Thank much, you very Jay. Much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. For Excellent. The fire and, and, yes. and, and the rescue service. <clears throat> well, thank you. So how do we want to approach this? Because you want to discuss it as a CIP? Well, I, I, think, I, I think there's two things to be discussed, right? The Board of Selectmen we'll discuss this has, to, after this, the CIP. has to decide whether to put this on a warrant. Does right? that have anything to do with the CIP? No, though? no. This so is a board of selectmen. First? It's a board of selectmen decision whether to go forward with a warrant. And or we not. can't do that because I've recessed the right. That's right. So That's right. I think so we're going to have to do the CIP first. The Ooh. CIP is a discussion of. Good night, guys. Uh, of of. And the, ladies. The CIP to me ought to be a discussion of what goes on in the spreadsheet in what order. Okay. Right. And okay. what well, priorities. So let's talk. And what about, notes. Let's talk about that though, because my my understanding is that the CIP process is everything goes on the spreadsheet we don't decide what goes on the spreadsheet right. we do prioritize right there's priorities and notes that's all we but have I to don't do know how we do that now without looking at everything in the CIP right right we have to look at the whole detail yeah of the CIP. let's right. look at it right so do we have that I guess is the question that's where I'm going yeah you, you have to look at what I didn't hear part of what you said. We have to look at the detailed lines of the CIP in total. If, yeah. yeah, if we're going to All prioritize stuff, let's do that. All of them, and you got to go down the columns and say, okay, which which one do we think as a CIP? Every, everything should actually have a, a, a category of one to five. Yeah, one priority. Have a priority. Exactly. Yes. Now, exactly. And in today, yeah, exactly. and five being exactly. on the way back. Burner. Exactly. Exactly. Which is That's something. That's how it's always basically broke down. Right. right. Which Correct. is something we never got to last year. Right, if you remember, you, we never got to it last year. But I don't know if we're, we're ready, ready for that yet, yeah. are we? You, you don't have to do that. That's no. what you've done historically, and it works, no. but it's... It, well, what else you, would you we can, do? You just list them in the year that they're coming in. Well, I, it. I, I, it's, I... It's what I, you want it to be. Yeah, but a, you know what? I, what I, I like the idea... Of prioritizing? I, I like the idea of prioritizing, and I like the idea of putting some notes in there, because it, it gives it gives the it gives the townspeople anybody that's reading the report anyways it gives them a, a better context of what the hell are we talking about plus plus it gives these two gentlemen sitting right here an opportunity to contribute more than just sitting in meetings and asking questions right so from a process standpoint I wonder we have to have this done so that we can get it into the town yeah board. so that was the question when is the when is the deadline for having that Don. The 29th, I believe, was the note from Donna. Uh, Dawn, sorry, Dawn. 29th of January? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we can ask Chris to put together the entire CIP based on a vote that we will take after this, after the CIP is um, closed, the CIP discussion, and then meet again before the 29th. Because that would give us an opportunity to look through it, do our own ranking, and come back. And if we're, yeah. it, it could save some discussion. Yeah, I, th I, think, yeah. I think that's exactly what we. Would should. that include the school items for the whole concept? Did you intend to do? Oh, that? we haven't discussed that yet. Let's let's close one issue, and then we'll I'd get back to that. Just a general question: Should we look at the whole picture? We're going to discuss that as soon as we agree that, on a pretty broad way of getting the CIP finished, is by letting Chris give us a final document based on some decisions that the CIP will make right uh, does the CIP have to hey yeah. I think we have to say that the, I think the CIP has to agree that the request for the quint is in the CIP yeah okay that's we're all agreed to that yeah. the CIP no because no, we're we're not approving or disapproving things going in the CIP it's just going to be in there it's going to be in there. it's going to right. be in there but then it's going to be in there with a priority that's fine and a set of notes that's fine and yes. that won't happen yes. until yes. a but later date do we all agree that it belongs in there I don't know. And I said, it, goes, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's it goes there. in it okay. goes in goes okay. in I just want to make sure that yeah. it's in it goes in then, now, then it goes to a recommendation to the budget committee so what we're going to do mistaken. John while you were gone not, what page are you on no. I, I don't CIP doesn't make recommendations no the CIP does not make recommendations the CIP 
IEP yeah. prioritizes. Rec provides a recommended prioritization. Recommended prioritization. The so whole purpose and effective is to aid the mayor and selectmen and the budget committee in the consideration of the annual budget. Right. Yeah. But but this is. And uh, they, I guess they don't make so recommendations. Wait, so wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let let Donna speak for a minute. So the prioritization is the recommendation. Yeah, I guess that's exactly okay, as right. As long as we notate it as such. Yeah. It's the way it's always been done. Yep. Uh, with some exceptions, but I'll accept. Perhaps, that. yeah. The the years that I was so doing it, that's how it was. The done. the recommend the uh, the uh, shall be to aid the budget committee. So we've got to we got to put a wiggle in it because the budget committee's you know finishing up there. But again, home. remember the CIP is forward looking. Right. Yep. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's a living document. I'm just reading from the law. Yep. So, 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 Jean, Jean, if 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 you bring to the budget committee a sheet that says 2016, 2017 out, that's all we need. Right. Here's the list of things that are coming. Yep. Right. Anything 2017 and beyond is budget committee. It's a heads up to you. Yep. In 2016, these are the things that mm -hmm. are going on warrant. Well said. Right. So. Okay. And, that, and that's it. And the budget committee then then votes on whether they agree with different things being on the warrant or not. And that's the recommendation that hits the ballot on the warrant article alone. He's yeah, not I'm not arguing with you. Article. I'm agreeing with you. He's not bringing warrant article. No, 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 no. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. We're we're bringing well, Mary. Selectman Mary brings the warrant article. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yes. board of selectmen yes, are bringing yes, the warrant yes, article. Yes, so yes, the board of selectmen okay. votes three zero to a vote. Yes, yeah. the budget committee votes. Yeah. 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 Ten to one, not yeah. two. Mary, yes, um, talking about the the process. So, John, what we were just saying is, um, Chris gets us the detail. Mm -hmm. We all go through our own exercises of prioritizing. Then we come back together and see where we match or disagree. Um, and the deadline apparently is January 29th. Right. Um, I have to be out of town on January 25th, which is our next scheduled meeting. Right. And so I was going to ask if uh, there would be any way that you guys would be willing to. Uh, move our meeting to say the 27th when I'll be back in town. <coughs> I don't have a problem with that. No objection. Um, I I have a really hard time with my calendar right now. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I actually pushed a three-day trip off this week so that I can go to the budget committee meeting. Okay. Um, and uh, what I have to say it is, is that I don't have a lot of visibility um, beyond I, I know that this week I'm not traveling, and next week I'm not traveling. But I don't know about the week after. Let's so. let's let's talk a minute. Um, we've got the um, on the 21st at the budget committee. We have a town final review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to meet uh, on next Monday? I know it's MLK Day, but does anybody want to get together on that uh, day? I can do that. I could do that. I can do that. I can do that. Okay, then we'll have a quick meeting. Well, Merely, uh, it's not even a selectman's meeting. It's a CIP. I think they may, may be a need for a selectman's meeting as well. Okay, then we'll post it for post. Yeah. Okay, so morning, afternoon, evening, what's your pleasure? It has uh, to be evening. It has to be evening, yeah. Okay. So is 6.30 good or would you like to start earlier or? Keep the norm. Same bat okay. time, same right. bat channel. Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, we'll get the, uh, from Chris. Um, Chris will get that to us in plenty of time by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah, uh, you just you want to be able to prioritize every single item uh, that's listed as its own thing or from the original yeah, list. Leave, right? a, leave a blank spot for that. And okay. That That'll be the only thing we do is prioritize on that day. And okay, if why we don't I, to the CIP. Right. Well, why, why don't I send you something that you can send me back? I'll can I'll, I will if you can give me a quick turnaround on it say you know end of the week what do we have to send you your your say initial he prioritization can, he can integrate them. i can consolidate all that so and all, feed it back to you so a when week we from get tonight. it it will actually have a pre prioritization so you can I flag could, the ones that need discussion yes oh okay yeah, yeah. okay that sounds good if, so, if you can do that quick turnaround i can do we have a, a set of definitions of what the priorities mean there's been there's been a set of definitions in the past are we going to simply adopt those definitions Give me yeah. the one that's right here. Yes. Yeah. One being urgent, two necessary, three desirable, four uh, deferable, five premature, and six inconsistent. Yes. I love right it there. Those right there were perfect for All right. clear I, definitions. I just wanted to clarify that. I'm, I'm Thank good you, John. too. Now, are you going well, to get us a we, document? See, we did, this is the 
2014. Yeah. Which we have the definitions, but on no prioritization. No one put the, those on there. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So it must have been a quick mishap. I'm sure it, they were talked about. It, er, no, 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 no. Er, er, ergo, the reason that we're doing the CIP this way this year, because we we didn't complete our job last year. Okay. Is the honest. Now yes. you're. Good. Chris is going to send us a completed request. I'll give you something you can pick, number one through six. I love it. And I'll do that tomorrow, and you'll have until, say, Friday to turn around and give it back to me, and then on Friday I'll stick it all together and send it back to you, and you'll know what we have Friday to discuss on Monday. Friday. Or, Are you uh, Thursday? No? Too fast? Uh, it's, it's more likely that it'll be Saturday or Sunday when I'm okay. doing it. Well, I'll, I'll, as soon as I get it from all of you, I'll turn around and spit it back to you. And we'll be here again on Monday. Don't forget to post that. Thank you for your uh, accommodating me on the 25th. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Um, okay, so that's the one. So that, Gene? Yes. Chris is going to get the document together for us. He's going to ship it out to us. We're going to put in our initial feeling on the subject, and then he's going to put them in. And if there's a, dis if there's a uh, conflict with our individual thoughts on the matter, then we'll have that discussion on Monday at 6.30, this coming Monday, MLK Day. Understood. Yes, Jim. Any further changes from what we see? Absolutely. This is open discussion for CIP. Because there'll be somewhere we're all in agreement and there's many others where we'll want to duke it out. Say what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> no, it's just funny to look back now that I should do this before, but to see what we had for the capital reserve for the vehicles and where we're going to go with it and the purchase of the new ones. Now, did, was, that was one of my questions. I can, I can find. We always had a capital reserve for the fire truck. Uh, we had it on here in 2014. It's called ladder fire truck, not quint, but whatever. Uh, I guess it's kind of the same that, thing. Well, we had that set up for the the 700,000 for a purchase in 2016. Yep. And then we had a capital reserve fund of 50, 50, 50, still going along. Yeah. So obviously, if we want the if we go with his plan, his plan, if we're dropping to 11. Yeah. Or or do we keep at 50? Yeah. That was part of our. We were even talking plan. about raising it, weren't we? Well, well the, with the chief we just. to 100 grand, but then making the 90,000 payments or 89 brought it down yeah. to only 11,000 going into yeah, the, which the is savings fund. <clears throat> yeah, it's not. Well, I, I think I think that. Um, so so uh, I, I, I was. Yeah, I small, was initially so. very much against that. Um, but then when you look at when you look at the vehicle purchases. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you you lay out what how where you're going to be paying for the quint and then what happens after it. I actually think it ends up kind of working it, by it, lowering the, the well. Well, what you're basically fund? doing is you're saying I'm going to take a hundred thousand dollars a year, uh -huh. right? And for the time that I'm paying this bond off for the for the the quint, um, I'm only I'm only setting aside eleven of that a year, right? Uh -huh. But after beginning with with year seven and on. Uh -huh. Where you you still have, where you still have uh, uh, many many years before you gotta replace engine two, well, right? And so you, so then you're gonna go back to the full the full amount. The hundred grand is gonna go in there. You got you got several years. You're gonna have, but by the time you get it done, you're gonna have the money that you need, Un unless something catastrophic comes up. I know. But, th but that's but that's the point of the of the planning that we're doing. Right. Exactly. That's why I don't like to lower it. I'd well, like to have a little something in yeah, there. Yeah, the, the switch that went off for me was, well, wait a minute, we're... It is kind of a wash. We're, we're planning all this stuff if nothing on. else happens. Yeah. But something happens. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know. Okay, so we'll discuss that further on Monday yeah. as yeah. part of our Well, that's going to be that's going to have to be part of a warrant discussion. Uh, that would be part of the warrant discussion. You mean for the Both. Capital Reserve Fund? Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. also... a. CIP discussion. Well, it's a warrant. I think we got to discuss that. It's a warrant discussion. Yeah, you're right. Both. Yeah. There's, there's going to be. You're going to see in your spreadsheet an item for uh, fire truck capital reserve fund. Yeah. As a standalone item. Okay. There's the bond payment. There'll yeah. be a second line to to make a contribution to the reserve fund. So you'll be able to prioritize right. that. Okay. All right. That's in the CIP saying, contest. You guys decide to. Yeah. However, you're going to post. Or yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll have a selectman's meeting because because we have the uh, final review for the town coming. So we've got to make those decisions on Monday as well. Yep. Um. 
So now the discussion goes on to the school portion of the CIP. Because Chris is going to be putting together the final document. I'm is that going to, do we need a legal opinion on this? Did they do a prioritization on their yeah. detail? Yeah. Was, well, you sent that to us last week or? Today, was No, it? I was way back on my emails. No, today we got, I saw we got this one. Sorry, Gene. And then yeah, you got you got the you got their department down, worksheets. Line item, what you got the department was, worksheets what today. It was, and, the things. Yep. and it came out at four thirty. I didn't really have time to go over it. I haven't, I haven't looked at it all. It came out so. Yeah. So I, I read it over today. So, what's your opinion, Mark? Uh, Isn't the budget committee concerned about? No. Okay. Well, if they put their prioritization on it, then I say I, we just go with their prioritization. But it should show up in our CIP is it what I'm asking. It needs to show up as one CIP. Yeah, right. well, like in the book here, it shows up on a separate page, but it's still under the quote-unquote CIP. Oh. I, don't think, I don't think that happened. That just happened because we ran out of space. I don't think that was intentional. Well, I mean, yeah, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's not right. We, we all ought to be trying to work together as a team. But, you know, it, it ain't going to happen. With the dynamics being as they are, it's not going to happen. And the budget committee... Quite frankly, you know, I'm sorry, but the budget committee just, you know, whatever they want. Acquiesce, yeah. They just, you know, whatever. Whatever. So, I mean, you can't even ask a question. You can't even ask a simple question without being, um, it, without it being considered that you're somehow, um, bully? Being a bully and over aggressive. I, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. Whatever. All right, okay. so for this year, we're just going to go with their, their prioritizations. I think that's. The safest mm -hmm. thing to do, but I think we do need to have some sure. sort of a discussion that, that the as to how the oh, CIP wait, does really work. Two weeks ago, does, does it? The, you you have the entirety of the law about the CIP. It is you have a lot of flexibility in how you. Sorry. There isn't uh, there isn't a separate. The, hmm. the school is not necessarily a separate entity. It's it goes into the town CIP kind of thing. The only, the, the law says the purpose of the CIP is to uh, guide or inform, I don't remember the verb, but aid, yeah. aid, aid. The, the policymakers about the budget process. Yep. The only other place that I'm aware that the CIP pops up is that in order to assess impact fees, you have to have one. And so, the, and that law points back to the CIP law. It has to be combined, says, I would think, the CIP, if it's going to be. Well, if I was going to challenge an, uh, the assessment of an impact fee uh, for school purposes, challenge. right? If if I had if I'd been compelled to to pay an impact fee for school purposes, and I went to the town report and the CIP that I read didn't say anything about the school, but I had a an assessment for that, then I would think that would be grounds to challenge right. that assessment. So it needs to be reflected in there. And I, I, the law is silent about how you present it, but it needs, it needs to be there. And you can argue about how good it needs to be or how far forward it needs to look or all kinds of things, but um, it needs to be reflected somehow. Um, what, help me, what needs to be reflected? The, the school portion of capital improvement planning. I, I think if we don't reflect it, we jeopardize our assessment of impact fees. The, the no, I don't think the, I, don't think the, I think it, we have to put it in the the category of the CIP. Yeah, you know, even though they do their own line items, as long as it, it somewhat matches or does yeah. to what we're doing here on the other departments in the town, yeah. you need to put it in there. So the fact okay. that it doesn't affect later on for impact fees and it doesn't affect that money that if they ever need it, it's available for. And you're going to be discussing impact fees at your planning board meeting. Planning board meeting on Wednesday. It's pretty much we have a small the thirteenth. Ah, uh, yeah, Wednesday. Six. Wednesday at, you remember? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Be there. Be there or be squared. Yeah, we have one, we have a. Um, one hearing or two One hearings? hearing before uh, about a Rocky Hill okay. lot line adjustment or something. And then it's, uh, then it's basically, that's our big yeah. discussion for the rest of the evening. Okay. Because that's going to talk about most projects. Okay, so are we done with CIP discussion for the moment? For the evening. For the evening. Okay. Yeah, for the evening, I meant. Um, then I'll close the CIP discussion. Um, can we open up the... Um, Do you need a motion? Um, no. No? Go ahead. I'll make a motion that we close... Uh, I'll CIP make a motion that we meeting. adjourn the CIP discussion for this evening. I'll 
I second. second. <laughs> oh, I can vote on this. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now I'll Put on your other hat now. open, I'll reopen the Board of Selectmen's meeting. I don't think I need a motion on nope. that. And um, so we'll continue the Board of Selectmen's meeting of January 11th, 2016. Yes. Yep, we did. We recessed. They no, they, they recess. recessed the Board of Selectmen and then they We opened the CIP. She opened, she opened the CIP. Okay. So she recessed the Board of Selectmen. Do you need to do some type of motion to go back in? Call no, I chair. just opened By it. Closing the, CIP. the body isn't here until the meeting is open. The meeting's open. Good night, nice Jean. hat, Gene. Thanks. I wish I had a hat like that. Yeah, maybe someday when you get mature. Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> it goes. You get a bowl of soup with a hat. Oh, my six-hour jacket, you see. Woohoo! I work hard at staying completely immature. It's done. Oh. I don't like. That's a nice jacket. Look at you. I thought so. Fancy guy. You must Sig. be hooked up with somebody who's making you dress I was nice. Hooked up with a fashion queen. Look at you. Sig sour. Good night. Good night. Good night, Jean. Okay. Cargo pants and everything. Look at this guy. Ooh, la la. Okay, so we're back to <laughs> proving the manifests. Can I just make one comment? Um, you sure can. I don't know how much time he spent with the chief, but um, I thought that was really good what he did tonight. Oh, standing. Anyway, that's exactly what we needed. Yep. So, and I, I think he's well positioned to go to town meeting now. No. So thank you. Right. I. That that was the what would absolutely be needed at town meeting. I, I I will tell you that I spent two days time across two days with him, I'll, and I'll just I'll just let you know that he had all the information. It, all it was Someone was needed it. It, all it was was a matter of of being able to collaborate some, with somebody to organize it. Yep. Yeah. And it, and everything else. I mean. Okay. It's good. Know. It's all good. So we need the. Um, we need someone to uh, make a motion to approve the manifests. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, accounts payable manifest of January 4th, 2016 and the payroll manifest of January uh, 5th, 2016. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye, aye, aye. aye, aye, aye. Um, the uh, approve the outstanding minutes. I wasn't there. Make a motion to approve the minutes of December 28th, 2015, as amended. A second. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Department reports. Uh, BOS. Oh. Anybody from have anything to say on the assigned boards and committees? You. Impact, right? Uh, 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 I do have on Marston. Okay. So, this is where we are with Marston. Have packages for you. Oh la la, oh la 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 la. Chris, I didn't bring bring this to you because um, I've got it. Got got there's, a big, a, pretty there's, picture. A, there's a big pretty one on his desk. There is a big pretty one on his desk, and little pretty ones too. So so here's here's where we are, um, and Marston Properties meeting tomorrow night. Um, so this top page is what I call the grand vision. Okay, this is taking the input that we received from New Hampshire and list. New Hampshire okay. lesson session okay. from the um, Nottingham day, the inputs that we got from people in terms of the ball fields that are needed, a pavilion, community gardens, walking trails, um, a, a track. Again, that's in the, the grand grand vision, um, you know, category. It, it, it's what the potential, what the potential is out there. Okay, this is not in any way, shape, or form what Marston Property Committee would be asking for or expecting. Mm -hmm. um, all along, it's just been important to have a plan, a vision of what could happen yeah. out there, yeah. so that we start small but don't lock it ourselves in or limit ourselves in mm -hmm. any way. Okay. Um, this. So this is north, right? Uh, that is where the road is. That's McCrillis? Yes. Uh, um, no, it's uh, across from um, Not McCrillis. Um, 
uh, West Mill Pond. Mill Pond. Yeah, Mill Pond. Oh, Mill Pond right. Road. Okay. Yeah. Case runs pretty close to north if, from Case, there. Yeah. Case is right, right yeah. across the street, north, northeast. Yeah. Who we'll do, like we'll do this? Who we'll do this? Up. Uh, so this is um, the team from Ironwood and uh, CMA work together on this. The only um, just look at it real quick. I see there's about a hundred parking spaces. Yeah. You think that's enough? Well, that's we, we kind of talked about it. Janet wasn't sure if that was enough either. I am concerned because I'm, I'm getting feedback from residents in that area. Yeah. And they're really concerned that there's going to be, it would be hard to access their homes and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know yeah. that yeah. that probably is a problem. The second page is what we went back to them and said, okay, what would be a phase one right. type of thing? What's, right. what's based on the immediate needs or the kind of more like the priority needs and what's more realistic to start with. Mm -hmm. And this is what they came back with. We just got this, what day is today? Monday, we just got this kind of revised phase one from them uh, on Friday. It includes, you know, just the, the multi-use field, the softball field, baseball field up front, uh, a smaller, structure not a pavilion but a stru smaller structure for storage and to house mechanicals um, some community gardens and some hiking trails do we have a place can i can i ask a question yeah um, so um I, I, i've got two questions let me finish first okay okay let me just tell you where where we are at Okay. Um, there is a number that's associated with this. Okay. Right. It's on the it's on the first page there. That's the total number. Hold on. That's for phase one. Okay. Oof. So, but here's what the Marston Property Committee has to do tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. What the committee is going to do is say, okay, phase one doesn't mean year one. <laughs> oh, good thinking. Okay. Yeah. So, year one. What do we think we would want to be able to do to get this project started? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you talk about doing these fields right here, mm -hmm. if we start on them in 2016, right? If we did those fields in 2016, they would be usable in 2018. Yeah. Because of you need two years. The grass and all yeah, of that, right. right? So if you got the fields in and then let them set for two years, in the meanwhile start planning your parking? Right? Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't have to address the parking right away. Because um, before we could really utilize those fields, we're definitely going to have to address the parking absolutely. and bathrooms. Parking is going to, well, we talked about in the initial phase, um, porta potties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Yep. So that, again, the exercise that the Marston Property Committee is going to go through tomorrow night is it's almost like developing a CIP for this project. Yeah, right. Exactly. Let's take a look. What would we want to try to accomplish in 2016? Then what would we want to try to accomplish in 17, 18, 19 that way? Okay. And the other thing that we feel is that some of the estimates that are in here that were provided by yep. um, them are high. Yep. And I'm, I'm just, I have an email here from Mishka who's been doing some investigation on that. Okay. So, I show this to you, but I don't want you to think that we're coming back and we're saying we want to put a warrant article on for a hundred thousand know. dollars. You know, and, and there's and there's money in the rec revolving fund still. Yeah. That could be used to help start some of this. Okay. Could I you guess guys see that? Yeah, and that'll be probably a big discussion on Monday. Too. And, and that's why Mary I said I'd, I'd like to first okay. be here for that meeting, and second, you know, um, make sure it's a BOS meeting as well. Okay. So, um, now that you have kind of a starting point, yeah. um, can you, as you go through these items, you know, the first step, second step, third step, yeah. can we put some kind of a outreach together to people in the community who have skills yep. or, and or equipment and or whatever? Yep. Um, to see what we could do sweat equity wise to work together uh, to do something. I'm sure we'll be able to do that. I'm sure we'll be able to do that. Okay. Um, and then the second piece that goes along with that is, is obviously, um, do you have a subcommittee that's going to work on, on um, outside funding? Uh, we don't have a the subcommittee. Yeah. You know, and, and we kind of have to decide 
where we go from this point, right? Because on Monday, I'm going to come back to you with a recommendation from the committee yeah. on, you know, what, if anything, we want to put forward for a warrant article this year, right? That's... That does it for... Th that does it for the committee, yeah. right? And so then we have to decide where does ownership and responsibility yeah. for this oh. fall moving forward. Yeah. Now, we, we can kind of debate the pros and cons of having a recreation commission. Yeah. That would be one place if we had that, it could fall there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not saying... Yeah. I think we have to do that, but we have to have that conversation about where does this yeah. fit after. And you put it. You or do we do we have a building committee yeah. that then takes over the project? Right. 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 Or do we have a committee formed merely to apply for grants? And that's you know that's that's, po that's possible as well. That's what well, we're you know, for. but it's not just grants these days, Mary. It's GoFundMe. Yeah, true, true. You know, well, it's, I it's, guess it wouldn't be a grant committee. It would be a fund fundraising. Fundraising. Yeah, and, I like that. And the, bank, the yeah. bank that I do business with. Go, go I, find I, it. I That's why you're here. Them, I contacted them over a year ago, yeah. and they were ready to talk over a year ago. Yeah. You know, and they, yeah. they help with these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, so, would, we hey, would. That's not a bad idea. We would actually. like to be able to get the project, get it going, get it get it started. Minimally, you know, my feeling is get, the, get us start to do what we can do to lay the groundwork for the fields. I also would like to see what we can do with regards to the community gardens, right? Because again, that's providing a little more access. It'd be nice to get some of the walking trails going, but I think that's aggressive in the first year. But you, oh, know, yeah. but you know what, walking trails are something that- Potentially we could get some more. You know. Yeah, we're Army Corps of Engineers and, and yeah. organizations But you know, like there's people that, you know, I got a rake. I mean, Boy Scouts. You know, I yeah. can take direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna work on that tomorrow night. Chris is gonna come to the to the meeting um, <coughs> to help you know provide some guidance and um, if people are gonna be in there helping, we gotta clearly mark the wetlands setbacks. The wetlands sort of is thing. is an open question um, that Chris is investigating with us because there are some that are considered and deemed to be um, critical and some that are. We're not sure didn't if they we, are. Didn't we have some kind of a requirement to put some portion of this into conservation? No. I thought I thought with the the agreement that was done with the state. No, no just it, it has to be something to do with the town. Yeah, period. Okay. The public town. use. Yeah, I know public, public use. use but is I the thought, key phrase. Oh, maybe I'm mixing this up with USA Springs. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I could maybe. do that actually. So, John, you're you're uh, looking perplexed. Yeah. Tons of trails. Would that be categorized as the lowest part of that? Uh, Probably. Just having parking trails. Probably. Just, we already have a resource in town for that. We're trying although, to get some of the resources. Not to mention although, Mulligan. And although John. Mulligan Forest, right there. We spent a good money you know, on that. That there are some. Although guys, John, for for, for, on, for people you know, like you who live who live nearer on the lake, it's easy to get to those walking trails. Actually, it's not. I have to cross the lake in order to get to them. That's probably harder for us. For, <laughs> for me, have a longer time to get there than you do from where you're at. How, how would I access the walking trails in the state park? Uh, you can access them off Deerfield Parade Road, which will bring you to the bowling field. You can access them through the boat launch. No, well, I mean, you have to think about the parking there. Yeah. Again, you, right? different times a year. Yeah. You can yeah. still access them. Your point is well taken. I'm just your point it, is well taken. It, it is actually. Yeah. Yeah. The I, state I, park is point. always accessible. I, I think one one of one of the things that we've actually talked about this before, and we ought to revisit is exactly what you just said. Um, is how do we let people know how to get to Mulligan Forest? How do we let people know how to get to we these? Yep. Well, no, just, just make a note on our, our webpage. Tangential. The upgrade, creating the webpage for the town yeah. is uh, recreational resources yeah. for people to yeah. use. We now. definitely you know, should have that, that on there. Where you can access the state park, where you can access Mulligan Forest, yeah. 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 where you have these, um, yeah. where there's yeah. fishing, where you can maybe park along the North River and do trout fishing. Yeah. As a, a yeah. future um, part on the webpage, yeah. just so people in town know where they can access public and free recreation. Very good points. The new website, I understand, will have that. We'll We're upgrading our website. So can I ask the other two questions yeah, right on this ahead. map? Yeah. Um, no, no your, your input is so, well taken. So one, one concern that I would have with putting fields as you have them is um, if somebody actually really gets a hold of a ball 
and you got somebody that's really good, they're going to send it in, into um, in the Mill Pond Road. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to uh, double check that because Janet raised that question as well. Um, on the field wanna, that's you know, if you closest to the If you flip those fields around, well, no, actually, if you flip the fields around, then somebody hitting a foul ball is going to send it that way. <laughs> sun, sun well, orientation. There's, there's sun orientation considerations okay. to okay. here. Yeah. The other thing is that I, I think that the vision is that this is actually kind of like a... A, a, a berm? A banking, okay. right? So for natural seating, right, up in here. Ah. So that's a whole. So, that's a berm, and it's got trees in it. Yeah, something? it doesn't show trees, but we talked about that. That would be a great place to put trees. Yeah. Right, because again, it protects. Well, I think you got some there now. The houses the, in the. There's a berm there now. Yeah. Is there any way to? Yeah. Is it really though that yeah, big? Little, Is there any way to swap these two? A little bit. Uh, and, put the, and put more parking up here, and well, back this up just a little bit. I don't know. I can ask. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, because I, then that takes care of the problem of the errant balls, but also, I, I just don't. Oh. This might be a nice overflow actually, kind of parking. Actually, if you point the fields that way toward the parking lot, mm -hmm. you're gonna have you're gonna have windows shattered. No, no. What she I'm saying. She just wants to move every shift everything back a little way. bit, so you have more parking and the fields come in a little ways. Yeah. I mean, don't forget. We've, this is just. We've got like parking for I think Janet said 58 or 60 here. here is what the parking is for here. I know, and they're up and down the road. They are up and down the road. That is a true statement. But if we're roughly doubling it there, you think? Everybody's not there at the same time, remember? Right? Games are coming and going. People are coming and going. We just have to, we have to be able to so soothe the fears of the folk of the neighbors 100%. because they're, they're not really keen on this in a lot of ways. Uh, they, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So, a couple so, of folks in the area have been attending the meeting. Yeah. So, so that brings me to the my second. Yeah. But if we can assure them there will be nobody parking out on Mill Pond, absolutely well, not. The police can help us with that. Yeah. Right. Right. But we want to make sure it's usable yeah. too. So my second concern is if you're going to have maybe it's maybe it's not a big deal, but if you're going to have a hundred cars going in and out, mm. are, are you going to be causing a traffic issue? Right, right across from Case Road. That intersection. At that intersection. So uh, again, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I don't. Pond Road is very busy. Yeah, but it's not a hundred cars coming in at once. No, you're right. Right. But it may be a hundred going out at once. Yeah. No. No, it's not like church going. No, I mean, getting out of church. I think an uh, average baseball game probably has like, I don't know, 15, 20 kids on a team. I don't know, you have yeah. little kids. 20 kids on a team. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have yeah. 30, 40 cars. Yeah. 15, 15 kids a team, something like yeah. that. So, that's so not you bad. might have like two. You might have two that's, kids. Uh, that's not bad. It's probably not bad. And then when when uh, when the town does the 300 year, you know, big shindig and, and it hap in, if it ends up happening to be here, I'm sure you're going to have a police detail anyways. Yeah. Right. So you, you yeah. get If it. we were going to do something like that there, we definitely have to talk about parking. Yeah. Yeah. If we're going to use it for those kinds of venues as well. Yeah. No, we for a massive event you'd use satellite parking. You wouldn't. Yeah. But where? I you'd shuttle it. I mean, you, you you don't build you don't build this site for one event. So yeah. you shuttle have to figure them. out. Uh, shuttle them. Unless you want to get into the you know the wine festival from business UNH. or whatever. <laughs> So, I mean, oh, I, no, I think, you, you shuttle them from the racetrack is what you do, but yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. that's so yeah. far down the road. Well, that's, yeah. Actually, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think the committee's doing a lot of good a lot of good work. I mean, when, you know, they came in with this, everybody was like, that's a great vision. Yeah. like it. But, but when you stop but, making... But let's start applying it. Yeah. Realistic. The, the, the pavilion that they showed was like 4,500 square feet, and... Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of conversations about what kind of a well you have to have if you're going to plan on serving coffee out of a building like that or not. And so one of the things we talked about is let's start with a small cinder block building, right, that's going to give us a place to house mechanicals and is going to give us um, storage. But let's know that we have that vision that perhaps someday we may want to expand it. Mm -hmm. so maybe, it's, maybe it's not 4,500 feet, but it's a little bit bigger. But I like the attitude. I really do. I, I think this is something that's probably got to you got to pull the throttle back because it's exciting. 
and but I think you, that's what you, you're doing. You do, but you have to know where you're going, where you're going, so that you don't put the ball fields has, right here. Has the guy has, has these have these folks at, gone out and actually walked the piece of property? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. wasn't just done from Google. Oh, no, 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 they've been out there to know because it is a small road and there's not a, there's no breakdown lane at all. So I think that's we don't want to upset the neighborhood. So that's any more than yep. Do you have other questions? Okay. So more to come on Monday. I like it. And uh, we'll be sharing some with the uh, planning board Wednesday as well. When are you going to meet with them? Planning board meeting is Wednesday. You got to meet with these the MPEC? Uh, MPEC committee is meeting tomorrow night. Can you just um, when the meeting's over and the, and the thing, just let them know that I appreciate all the good work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been kind of a hard, I will. hard one. And I don't want people to think that they're not appreciated. I do appreciate it. Okay. Um, very, thank you very much. You're welcome. There's a lot of discussion there. Uh, so you're going to come back Monday with the next generation of this? It, not, not a next generation of a... Of, of a drawing because no but, that, uh, but, but, uh, the, but the here's what we think we'd like to accomplish in 2016 okay so that oh, that's just good. to set up next week that's the second half of next week's meeting really is exactly. CIP and then this and then, right okay. and and is there a warrant article that comes out of that because right. we, we definitely have to have that because we'd have to have that for the um, final town review Chris and I also talked about having a warrant article that authorizes us to accept donations oh definitely right yeah so that you know anything that comes along in that vein of looking for funding now that would be for ever to accept gifts not just for one year yeah i don't know what we have on the books already but we may want to do something specific to this site or you know we gotta, yeah. we gotta put some more thought into set that. up a, yeah. set up a fund even yeah. you know an account yeah. yep. people buy benches kind of thing we can absolutely do that we can absolutely do that that's nice that's very nice. And, you know, However, the person who wins the really big Powerball. I was just, I told Chris, <laughs> I told him the other day that when Eric and I win, <laughs> it'll be a moot point because we'll be building Dana's Fields. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's nice. The Gen Tent Pavilion. Smack uh, 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 we're not bringing that word up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be designed like a big Gen Tent, right? The whole thing. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> I just want everybody, anybody listening at home to know that I didn't bring that damn word up. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Not uh, a damn word. You, it's a good word, but I you, bring it you up. You don't have anything. To, did you get, get any feedback on the budget committee meeting? I know you could. You weren't able, able to be there. I, I, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, okay. I, I saw this. I've been told about this. I saw it. There's, there's, a substantial, there's a substantial set of numbers there, a substantial tax impact. Um, now, this was prepared by the school board? Yeah. And I, and I haven't, you know, this is the first time I'm seeing it on paper, so I'm not going to make a statement. That's a substantial... I have, to, I have to review it, and there's a public hearing. I guess the school public hearing is this it's Thursday. Okay. Is it the public hearing? Yeah. Yes. So... The Thursday the, is a public hearing on what? School? School, school budget. budget. School budget public hearing. Yep, I got it down. Okay. So, That's right, know, too. between now and then, I'll, I'll review it in You'll more detail. It. and yeah. You know, I may, may have some questions. I may make some statements and whatever. Okay. Um, is that it for reports, guys? Uh, yeah, this hasn't been any planning um, board. Okay. Um, so there, this is, it's more of a non-public discussion, but I sent you an email about something to do with the recycling center. Yep. We'll do that non-public? Yeah. Okay. Um, Town department reports, general mail. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I see the folder, please? Which one would you like? Mail folder. Oh, we have to sign those, too. You have to sign the manifests. Uh, yeah, good point. Thank you for reminding me. That's your mail. Okay. Regional Economic Development Center. Got an invitation <laughs> to something. We got, that's, we've got this right in a better form. 
So there's a bunch. Do you want me to have the manifest so I can sign it? They're coming. Okay. I think you got it in your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Funny, I'm coming. It's already home. been a long night. Um. I think that's what we don't have. Oh, nope, oh, got it. So are we supposed to take copies of this? Since that's just from that? Bill. Bill dropped those off this for you. You're welcome to it. Okay. I don't yeah. think you will find it that helpful, but it's up to you. Okay, fine. That's that. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of things in your signature folder that I just want to explain what it is before I send it down the line. Okay. Um, two things I need you to make motions on. One is the appointment of Jay Vilchalk as fire chief. They had their election since your last meeting. Okay. Um, so there's some wording on a motion here. And the second is the appointment of uh, fire wardens, which is one of your legal functions. And there's a motion here and a signature uh, as well. So uh, when those come, somebody wants to start a motion on that. Um, there's a retirement card for you to sign. The uh, uh, conservation easement on the Fernald property on the lake that we yep. dealt, dealt with last year and the closing got put off yeah, and yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. closing's gonna happen. Uh, we have a deed for you to sign. Uh, it's exactly the same as the last one you signed except the dates have been changed to 2016 to okay. reflect the new closing date. Who's gonna go to the closing? Uh, Sam. Uh, so that's here for you to sign. Uh, two appointments that you made at your last meeting are here for you to sign. Liz Katowski and Crystal Costa to the Conservation Commission. Um, I wasn't here for that, so I probably shouldn't sign them. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. We, we, um, we thought they were okay. Oh, you, you can sign them. Yeah. But um, I was I don't, where I wasn't there for the vote. I'm not sure if my signature should be. So if you would be willing to do those two motions uh, and votes, then you can just start signing. Um, I need motions. Mm -hmm. uh, I make a motion that the Nottingham Board of Selectmen approve the appointment of Jay Vilchak as fire chief from January 1, 2016 to January 2017. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. I was gonna, I'm getting punchy. Um, the Nottingham Board of Selectmen approves the appointment of fire warden, deputy fire, deputy fire warden, and issuing agent according to the 2016 reappointment list as provided by New Hampshire Department of Resources and Economic Development Division of Forest and Lands. That's a, that's a motion. That's a motion? Yeah. I said read the motion. Uh, I'll second it. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. What's that? Oh, is that you? The list is attached. The list is attached. Do you want to read the names? There were more than one. <laughs> I should think. You have to make sure you read only the yeses and not the noes. Oh my goodness. You, do you really want me to read? No, that's okay. I'm sorry. I mean. As printed. As printed, yeah. As printed. Chris, um, can, I was going to say. Can you go back to the Conservation Commission and ask them how they're doing on updating that spreadsheet? Yeah, I know. I saw that. That was one of my I, questions. I had the same discussion you did in advance of your meeting, just so you know. that I knew you'd be looking for that, and I tried to make that happen for you. But, um, sorry, we weren't able to. It's been three years. Um, four. <laughs> So is there something we need to sign on this one? Nothing, no? Yeah, nothing? that's... Yeah, yeah, there's a sign here, doohickey oh, on there the... there it is. You mean the big yellow sign here? Yeah. Um, Chairman, Mayor, um, Selectman, Chairman. So you're the, you're the mayor? <laughs> May or... <laughs> mayor or... City town manager, um, P O S, I guess. Sign that one too. Okay. I'm gonna keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, just a couple quick reporting out things, reminders, and whatnot. The presidential primary is going to be February 9th. And it's going to be here. It's going to be here in this building. I think there may be some confusion out in the world. We're here for the primary. 
So if, God forbid, anybody's still watching on TV, we're voting here on February 9th. Um, uh, the window for uh, filing for elected officials in town is about to open on January 20th. There's a lot of openings. Uh, two seats on the Board of Assessors, three on the Budget Committee, one cemetery trustee, two library trustees. Remember last year at town meeting we increased the size of the Board of Library Trustees. Um, excuse me, three positions uh, on the uh, on the trustees of the library. Uh, a moderator, two members of the planning board, one member of the board of selectmen, one supervisor of the checklist, one trustee of the trust fund, and one member of the zoning board. The window for that uh, sign up is January 20th through Friday, January 29th at the t in the town clerk's office. You're going to take these, right? I said it go down there. Okay. So that document is a little bit off. Which document is a little off? The one that he just read. Is that so? Um, I have a, I have an announcement. Um, I happen to be very lucky to have a business that is on the verge of taking off like a rocket. Congratulations. That's good news. And at the same time, I run a consultancy. And as you guys know, in the last three to four months, at least, um, I've had a hard time making all the meetings. Um, and I don't see that changing. I see that getting worse. Um, you also know that um, there have been times when, when I have um, not necessarily been my happy, jovial self. And it has to do with a number of factors, some of which are frustrations in town, but um, most of which is the fact that um, I'm going seven days a week all the time. So um, my intent um, I, I, I don't think that I, the other thing is that any time that I ever do anything, I always want to do my best. And when I'm not doing my best, I'm probably my worst critic. When I'm not doing my best, I know it. And I've not been doing my best um, for some time. So um, I wanted to let you all know that um, my intent is to resign my position from the Board of Selectmen. Um, and my preference would be that it would be effective upon the completion of um, Chris's review. Um, but I would, you know, put that out to you guys. Would that be your, it would be effective at the end of town meeting in March? Is that? Well, I, I, as you know, I'm traveling a lot. And I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's hard, it's hard for me to be able to say that, yes, I definitely can be there, you know, through town meeting. When do you do for review? February. February. It's going to be done by the end of February. So, you by know, the you, end of February? Yeah, by the end of February. I'm just saying that town meeting comes so quickly at that mm -hmm. point. Is that is that a possibility? It, it may be. I mean, if, if you guys are open to it, I, we can revisit it as it comes closer. I just don't know what, what my commitments will be. I think. What is, what's the process when somebody resigns? I mean, should we be. What we can do as, as the remaining board of subluckmen, you know, if, if Mark was to walk out right this minute out the door we would have the ability to two of us would to appoint, appoint to, the term. No, to, to the end of this to the end of town meeting with a i think the, the ballot would indicate that there's us two spots available uh if the resignation is effective before the filing period opens for the meeting ah. you can elect at that meeting if the if the um, if, the, if the excuse me, if the vacancy is, you know, well, we have to get some legal clarity on when the vacancy starts. If it's at the point it's, and now, you know, it, the, it, the the vacancy would. Start. I think Mark's intention is to allow for the election of somebody in March. That, right. That that would that, be that, that would. would, that would so we may we may have to. Seems to me that that's the right kind of nice transition to do. But so what I'm I don't saying cause is that if 
if you stayed on till because the the new selectman is signed in at the end of the meeting in yeah. March. Yeah. That's when you get signed in. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, the sitting selectman is the selectman, even though it's gone past January first. It seems mm -hmm. to be March to March. Mm -hmm. So that's my feeling on it. I, we've never had to do this before, so. Yeah, we just. I want to get one clarification on: Can he? Can he submit a resignation that's effective in the future and allow you to post that on the ballot? I think right. I can. That yep. It's logical. Yep. I just don't know if it's legal. And then it would be so logic. Then it would be a completing the term. That which would be two years. Two years. Yes. Yeah, so it would be two completing year two years, so we stay in the same cycle. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Um, and and it, there may be a you know you he, he resigns and then you reappoint him for the interim so that you have the opportunity to um, if you know if you want to. If you want to open the ballot for this process, then we have to make sure we do that by the right, by the twentieth, right okay. and we'll can guide you, you through how to do that. Can but, you uh, have that answer maybe by? Oh yeah, yeah. I think, I think we may have it tomorrow, but oh, um, cool. okay. gotta have it before before the, the window opens window on the final. Yeah, which would be Monday. It would be good if yep. if sooner, fine. Yep. But at least by the our get together okay. on Monday. Well, good for you. Your business is yeah, really demanding one hundred percent of your time. Four. Yeah. <laughs> More. Yeah. But it's just some real good. Good for you. Good possibilities. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I just okay. need to put. Sorry the to hear that. But to put the focus where it, where it needs to be. Okay, we've done the fire Thanks. chief. Uh, we've done. We haven't done deed waivers. Uh, do you have anything else? I, I don't. I think I jumped right over you. No, that's enough. Okay. It's eight thirty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's getting to be close to my bedtime. Yeah, really, deed waivers, kids. Let's get to it. Uh, deed waivers. You have. You have. Uh, this is the same process we've we've used each year. Same criteria. Um, we broke this up into two separate motions because of uh, a conflict. the appearance of a potential conflict for one of you. Uh, the list is shorter than it than it has been. Our tax collection rates are creeping up a little bit. I think. Um, I sent you an email on one property that I'm recommending that you waive, but that we're going to need to pay attention to. Uh, and then just for public consumption, the two that, um, I, well, if you want to put a motion out there, I'm not going to explain it, but, um, or I can just keep talking. You want to, uh, want to do motion two and then we'll do motion one later? Yep, whatever At the want. end of that. Go ahead. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen waive the deeds and notify the tax collector that they will not accept the tax collector's deeds on the following properties pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 80 colon 38 um, properties as listed. Or do you want me to read them all? Map and lot. Read, read okay. map and lot. Um, all right, let me do it again. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen waive the deeds and notify the tax collector that they will not accept the tax collector's deeds on the following properties pursuant to, to New Hampshire RSA 80 colon 38. Map 13, lot 12. Map 39, lot 20. Map 1, lot 2. Map 1, lot, lot 3. Map 1, lot 12. Map 3, lot 11. <laughs> map <laughs> Want eight, me to continue for you? 8, lot 13. Map 15, lot 9. Map 20, lot 8. Map 24, lots 141 and 143. Map 28, lot 12. Map 37, uh, lot 15. Map 42, lot 15. Map 46, lot 6. Um, map 57, lot 2. And map 61, lot 13. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I, I'm recusing myself. All right. Is this the one you're going to provide background on? Uh, no, I, no. What I'm going to talk about isn't on your list. So oh, okay. Go ahead and bang that out, and then do it. Go ahead. Uh, I move that the board of selectmen waive the deeds and notify the tax collector that they will not accept the tax collector's deeds on the following properties pursuant to NA New Hampshire RSA 80 colon 38 map 23 lot 2. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, the only two parcels that you have not waived, uh, for those listening at home, that is, this is, this is not waiving the deed, is, is taking the property for unpaid taxes. 
and what the selectmen are doing is uh, taking for unpaid taxes two parcels one at the intersection of Freeman Hall and Kennard Road uh, the dilapidated old vacant been vacant for years house and another parcel that's been identified as owner unknown and has been lingering on the rolls for a few years without uh, any clear ownership it kind of disappeared from the tax rolls and then reappeared a few years ago so um, the uh, Freeman Hall and Kennard piece comes up in the budget for demolition uh, you know we, we've talked about that one before um, and uh, it's a decent house lot so I think it'll become a candidate for resale uh, for you at some point the one on um, on uh, uh, Freeman Hall and the intersection of Kennard um, is a is a liability at the moment it seems that children are getting into it or someone is getting into it and yep. and it is a, of a concern to the police department it is an abandoned house the owner has passed on otherwise uh, the town would not be doing it yeah we will we will be demolishing it shortly after town meeting depending on weather and you, you say here that the probate situation is murky yeah it, it um, due to the um, financial situation of the the, uh, the prior owner um, uh, she 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 was in some kind of assisted living or you know state there was there was uh, it was unclear um, whether there were liens or or should have been liens on the property uh, from the state um, and so we've we've known this was a, a, a a headache that had to be dealt with for a while so uh, but we really took our time with it worked with uh, our council on are we are we clear to take this now are we doing everything we have to do um, there is a, the the woman who uh, owned it and passed away has a daughter but um, has been unresponsive to you know all the attempts that we've made to um, so my, my question the reason my question is to do do we have legal bills coming up as a result of this whole situation we've we've had uh, a couple of well over the course of a couple of years yeah um, we've engaged counsel in 15 minute increments here and there about it not okay. not significant but we don't have any kind of a big probate no got to go to court you know big issue to no. wrestle this or anything no uh, um, counsel's confident that we can move right along with this now so um, generally a lien takes precedence over even a mortgage yeah, um, yeah. A, a, a municipal lien I should say yeah yeah yeah, understood. Um, I, yeah the tax collector has been chipping be, away at this for a, a it's few gonna years it's going to be pretty clean for us to go in and do what we need to do and yeah especially where it's uh it's now a, it's now a health and safety concern yeah, yeah. uh and and well, it has been for a while yes, but it sure uh, has. That also gives us uh, cause to act quickly uh, when we do come to own it and yeah. uh, uh, and have every intention of doing so. Yeah. And it won't be inexpensive to take down. No, we have a number. Um, it's built into the budget. We got to, you know, so mm -hmm. um, we'll make it back. You know, if we ever, if we do sell the parcel, it will more than cover any costs that we've incurred in in the taking. And um, it doesn't that this is an aside that that property is not a candidate for fire training no yeah we no. looked into that no okay. no it's not not even safe enough to burn okay yeah all right and let's hope Fair we enough. can take it down before that happens yeah so are you looking for a motion on this or are we nope no nope. uh you don't need a uh, motion to deed these i need you to sign that big stack is everything you just voted on okay what about the um taking the deed nope. the, this uh happens no by no operation of law? yes no action by you means that it's um oh i see by not by not, not acting it. yes okay you have to act in the affirmative to prevent its taking <clears throat> Are we okay. signing for everyone? We just yes. yes. <laughs> That's your piss. That's my, I might as well pass these along down to you guys yeah, as I get started. Yeah. Keep the pages together. 
Are we dating this or not? No. I think it is. Are you going to date it for us? We can handle that. I think, I think it is much. Okie dokie. You can do it tonight before you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can do it tonight before you go home. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I was just a thought. I'm trying to be helpful. Probably going to go home for dinner. Yeah. Is there an associated piece going on? No, it seems like only one of them had it. Oh, then I missed a signature. God, I don't like this pen. Which one you got? Right, right. The one I got from the police department okay. is really nice. I, I see. Like it. I like those. Sorry, here it comes. Make sure I don't do the one I'm not supposed to. The last one? Yeah. Good. When I was in third grade, I couldn't make I couldn't make a K mm -hmm. doing cursive writing. Good thing you didn't have like a name like Caracas or something. I'm 55 and I still can't make a K. I changed school so many times. Some things can't be helped. As a kid, <laughs> that um, my penmanship is, reflects it. <laughs> I lived in like. 15 different houses before I turned 14. And at least I have to pick in different school districts. No, silly. Oh, sorry. <sighs> oh. Yes? I can't. Silly? <sighs> okay, where are we, Chris? What, what next, Chris? I think that, uh, let me get my agenda. Budget. budget. Ah, the budget, which you gave us nice new copies of. Thank you. All updated and. As of five something this evening, I think. I know, now you're going to have to change it, I think. That would be a warrant article, though, right? Why would we change it? 830? The warrant. The color copies have right there at the top. Very nice. Yep. Not Oh, okay. Operating. Just okay. 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 Um, want to point out any high points for us? The uh, well, you got you got something on revenues for the first time yep. today. We, we have we have year end revenue. So what is essentially year end revenues? We have some uh, some transfers and things down the bottom of that page that haven't been done yet. But for the most part, 2015 is done. Um, it's up huge. The difference. Um, from oh. 20. Well, I, I, that's what I thought. Compared to the estimate? Okay, okay. that was. Um, there, there are some big. I went, uh, I went back through. Our estimates were always low. You had for other years. Well, it's actually down from 2014. The actuals are down from 2014, right? 150 down. 130. Uh, what are you seeing? Actuals there? or final? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The I just mixed the I just sorry. Forget I just said that. Okay. I just mixed the estimated versus Yeah. Yeah. So we we blew our estimates out of the water Apparently. for revenues um, for a few reasons. Um, most notably is the sale of the tax deed and parcels that we made last year. Yeah, yeah oh, right. Um, right. So that's a that's not real. That's one time money. There was no money. way to estimate that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that shows up as income. Um, the um, still not. That's not. It's not all of it. Uh, second piece is the surprise FEMA reimbursement. That's right too. You remember that story? Yeah, that came in uh, unexpectedly. 
Third piece is motor vehicle registrations continue to climb. We saw if you look back at 13 was 770, yeah. 14 was 830, this year was 902. So that's that's climbing at a $70,000 a year clip for a few years each year. Um, we did not, we, in our budget process last year, we said that's probably going to continue, but that, let, let's not bank it. Let's just let it happen, and sure enough, which, it did. What, which one was motor that? vehicle registrations. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, okay. Motor vehicle. It's listed as motor vehicle permit fees. Yeah. So that was um, that was over nine hundred thousand dollars for the year. Yeah. Um, and then a host of other things are up. The um, the rooms and meals in the highway. The new laws kicked in on rooms and meals tax, or well, on the highway funds, and rooms and meals tax collections were up statewide. Um, building permits we were conservative in our budgeting on so it, it was a combination of factors um, all to the good almost yeah. um, so to go forward into next year um, this uh, the whole the whole revenue projecting exercise is just that it doesn't mean much until you yeah. get to September, and then the and then your full year estimates start to impact the tax yeah. rate setting process. So, um, this is th this doesn't mean anything in a lot of ways, and I, I don't want to minimize it because yeah. the revenues are just as important as the expenses. Yeah. But from a budgeting point of view, uh, so what I did is is tried to um, capture realistic. some of the things that we see happening repeatedly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most Same notably, survey. motor vehicle permit fees. Um, I mean, this is, that's an economic recovery story more than anything. Um, uh, the, that's going to continue. Well, w I, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that we budget what we just did. Um, yeah. You know. No, you're you're back. Um, what it yeah, like that's it that's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, if we fall back to 2014, the 2014 range of revenues, that's really what I'm using as a right. um, to peg that. Building permits the same way. We have actually have quite a lot in the pipeline. Uh, we don't know, you know, how fast they're going to move. We know we have some subdivisions that look like they could move pretty quickly in 2016, uh, which will drive our our building permit revenue. But I didn't cook in a big number there. What is business licenses and permits? Uh, that is um, a cable franchise. Okay. And that's another one that goes up. Yep. We can budget more for that this year that we couldn't last year because we didn't have the town meeting vote in hand for that cap that you right that you put in place. So that's the bulk of that. Um, uh, There's not much else in there, right? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, so all told, I mean, even being what I think is pretty conservative, I, I think honestly, I, I may come to you this spring with some more um, parcel sales to consider. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not, you know, I'm not counting any of that here. Um, we're not selling any old vehicles or anything that shows up and that kind of stuff shows up in here too. We're not aware of any other assets that we're going to sell. It's this one right here. Uh, not right away, yeah. No. Um, so is anyway, there, is there a warrant that you could put in place that said that um, sale of municipal property could be redirected toward um, something like Marston? Yeah, it'd be better to do it as a, a specific type of asset because um, you know, the sale of empty, all of our empty, assets. empty soda cans are, and they don't list it here, but they are a municipal asset in the time that we own them. So you'd have to define it pretty but, carefully. But we had but, talked about that kind of uh, almost two years ago now, right? That was Didn't the whole idea that got started looking yeah. at the properties. Selling yeah. the properties, right. And so now you got you got this money sitting here, and it's gone back into the, where's it gone? General and fund. It goes to the undesignated, undesignated. Uh, fund balance. So could um, we put a warrant in place that allows us to take it that out of there and, and put it toward Marston? Or not take it out of there, but moving forward. Moving forward, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, the we, cleanest way would be to, you know, the sale of uh, tax deeded and surplus real estate it goes to X fund. That kind of thing. You could. Yeah. yeah. I would. I would support uh, something like that this year. The. Um, we should have done it last year. 
Well, I mean, you can you, you can take money out of the fund balance yeah. with the same m- m- vote. Because it's at unallocated, town right? It's un it's unallocated. No, so. if you it, you got you you got whatever you, we got in the fund balance, you can take money out of that and spend it on a Marston at town meeting if you want to anyway. Yeah. That, yeah, but yeah. that's yeah, not but it, that's it, historically that's, not what you've yeah. done. That's that's the that's the um, crisis fund, right? That is but, everything. Yeah, that's the crisis. <laughs> yeah. Fund. So I'd uh, rather be clean and start, upfront about yeah, yeah. moving forward yeah. if we were to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'd, I'd support something like that. I think I might suggest you not confuse the decisions about. I mean, if you if if it's something that you want to spend money on, vote to spend the money on it. Um, they're do they're two different it. things. They're two different. You know, uh, you, do you do you want? Um, I don't know. You, you can talk about it, but it's all right. Let's um, let's think about it. Okay. Uh, and like I said, we have some transfer noise and stuff that's still to be settled. For but that doesn't mean anything. You have um, um, a list of compensated absences ca- carry forward. That is for the warrant. Uh, preview stuff that uh, that was for the um, comes later in the program if you are so interested. Contingency fund. Contingency fund. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's the revenue budget. Unless you want to. Was that name missing off of your list? Uh, no, that's uh, that's been paid and closed. He's not with us anymore. Hmm? Who's that? Who's that? This one. Yeah, he left in 2014. Oh, okay. Um, Who is it now? There's uh, one, two, three are our well, okay. career guys. Okay, so then the other, the other young man was Zach. I thought that was okay. Thank you. Uh, I tried to find that out. I couldn't find it anywhere. So, that's revenues. Uh, you got a refreshed expense budget. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> There's not a lot of change since the last time you saw it. Um, we we weren't that successful in making purchases in December to take things off of here. Things didn't come together the way that we had hoped. Uh, nothing horribly so we, wrong. Just uh, do we need to do. Oh, well, it's too late for encumbrances. No, no, we don't know. Every we're clean with year end, okay. um, but. Um, a few of the things we I had originally identified um, some protective gear for the fire department but that's custom sized and so that wasn't that was a bad idea to begin with Uh, the server for our office I couldn't get to something I wanted in time and I said we'll just wait Um, so there was a few pieces that we we didn't pull off and a few we did Um, we've added in a um, we have, a, we have a lot of kind of offsetting revenue items in here that are, they have to show as expenses, but um, we got an emergency management grant. We have um, um, impact fees. We still have 10,000 budgeted for that study here. Right. That's still here, even though we don't have final word, I don't think from, uh, I think the, the assumption is we're moving forward with it, but um, there's still time to change our mind on that. Um, on the What's um, that? right, yeah, yeah, and you didn't make um, a decision. I think we decided to kind of hold off, didn't we? Right, so that number sits here. Yeah. Um, and if you change your mind, you change your mind, we change the budget. Yeah. Um, we, um, there was also talk of uh, some cost sharing with the school district on that, uh, which cost sharing, member, uh. We don't reflect here, but yep. somebody yep. needs to keep in mind. Yep. Uh, um, let's see, what else is, okay, so one thing, one change that you have not really discussed, um, we moved the costs and the revenues for Nottingham Family Day into the general operating budget. Because um, they were in rec revolving? They had been in the rec revolving. Um, it is a community-wide event. It is, um, where, where, is it, where is that? It, uh, in lines 303 to 314, you look in 309, uh, you see an additional 3,600 in expense 99. there. Oops, 
Um, That's consistent with uh, yep. the recommendations of the committee. Right. Yep. 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 Uh, and night, John. Night, John. Night, John. Uh, and that's uh, and so the revenue number that, that I kind of breezed over, but there's there's that three thousand is in there. There's five thousand for their emergency management grant. There's uh, you know that that's part of what's driving up our revenue number for next year as well. Is yeah. um, two sided things like that. None of them more than five thousand dollars, but okay. handfuls of those things. Um, um, on on the uh, the rec equipment. Yep. So we spent three thousand dollars in twenty fifteen on the online registration software, and we got to spend another three thousand in twenty sixteen. We it's about a twenty nine hundred dollar annual. Uh, uh, really? Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think we may we may go back and look at that as Ooh. depending on how we use it. Uh, Are we using it now? No, we just we just we're just launching it right now. Um, that may be a good candidate for the revolving fund, depending on how we use it. That's that's um, yes, yes, but that's three grand a year for a software license is pretty steep. I'm sorry, well, what was that for? It's uh, online registration, school. online registration and scheduling for all the rec programs. Oh, yeah. So all the league management stuff, all the. Did we ever see anything on that? remember that no not not in any great I mean it's been it's been in the number here but you haven't seen anything product specific about it look, no. look we had two hundred dollars budgeted this year for that and we spent twenty nine hundred dollars on it so that is software that that's software that you guys already went out and we licensed it we bought we bought a year of it okay um, is that did you look into it to see that that was the oh yeah we, we did a whole comparison of a whole bunch of different that vendors and yeah. Um, Three thousand a year. Um, that's that's you know. Looks like a talking, golden opportunity for for um, a little competition. Two hundred fifty bucks a month. I mean, that's. that's I think it's uh, well. You it it allows us to uh, get rid of one office position pretty okay. much. Uh, you'll see up on the payroll line, we're we're removing one. Uh, it doesn't turn into dollar savings in year one, but it's um, fewer heads. Chris, is that one license or two licenses? Uh, it's, well, it's, uh, it's, mul it's probably multi-user. I mean, so all, of our, all of our staff are going to have access to it. Okay. Yeah. So that um, would drive it up. I don't, see, I don't see the salary line coming down. No, it, it's, it's a, um, there's a few things driving that. One is... Uh, well, most of it is is merit increases, um, and I'm not suggesting that it pays for itself in payroll. It's, you know, we're, yeah. we we shuffle our our people around a little bit, but um, okay. I think long run, it's it's going to be a good investment. Okay. Um, I think once you get past the budgeting stuff, it would probably be good for the board of selectmen to see what 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 we're getting on oh yeah you'll, you'll be able to see it you, you'll be able to play with it I mean you'll be able to go online and look at all you know so people are using it to register their kids yep so it, there's office efficiency and there's greater service to the town yeah the, the biggest benefit is to the user um, right now we have a completely paper-based system and every yeah. time any child in your family has wants to sign up for a program there's a whole complement of yeah paper that has to go back and forth and you got to bring it to the office and mail it to the office write a check all that stuff um, this doesn't all, this doesn't include payment uh, the, there's a there's gonna be a f um, a cost to use a credit card but that's borne by the user yeah, not by the town but it is going to be you're going to be able to pay online with a credit card yes oh well, it's that's, no different it's that's the, way, good. the way you pay for school lunches now yeah right is you pay you can pay the lunch service provider directly mm -hmm. and uh if you pay with a credit card then there's like a it's uh, actually an exorbitant fee it, three or four yeah, percent yeah, it's ridiculous Isn't it? it makes me mad every time is i do it, it four but you do it every time but i do it because it's easier than Yep. Well, that, that three to four percent—that's the merchant fee. Yeah, right. exactly. 
Yeah. Is that's it that what, high or is it higher? I think it's higher. It's they're higher. Making, they're Somebody's making some really money on really it. Tucking it. It's higher. Yeah, right. and the per tra there's different ways to do it. It's per transaction charges and there's, uh, yeah. you know. But, well, that's wicked. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but the, the user experience goes from every time I engage with a program, I go through this rigmarole to yeah. I create an account for my family and these are my kids and these are my releases. And I don't have to sign a whole bunch of stuff, that's and I just nice. clickety clickety yeah, click. Yeah, that's fantastic. Play, okay. pay my right. ticky, yeah. and away we go. Yeah. All of the scheduling stuff, or most of that scheduling stuff, will be done there, so the staff can have it all in front of them. They're not juggling QuickBooks. Yeah. They've, they've been using QuickBooks while we're using a completely different system. Yeah. Um, plus. I think an Excel spreadsheet to do scheduling. I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it now. Um, okay. So I think it's I, my my reaction. Great leap forward. But, uh, based on my hosting fees or half of that. F field scheduling, league management, roster management. Yeah. Okay. All okay. of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Whatever. If you've okay. done the done anyway. work. Uh, Any more questions on the budget? <clears throat> We'll do a quick purview of the uh, warrant. The, um, <coughs> do you, are you guys prepared to vote on whether or not we'll put a warrant article on for the Quint? I'm prepared to vote on that. Well, yeah, but we do the warrants, right? We don't, we're not going to do them. No. I would let us draft an actual final wording of everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before you well before vote. do you want to know how we feel on it or? Uh, well if you're if you don't want me to do that work you can tell me that now that would that would save us a little bit of work yeah but that's, it's that's, not a big deal um, uh, I'll, um want to just quickly go through it without a vote um, the queen purchase okay, if you want. <coughs> uh, 10% rule that was just part of that long-term borrowing that's part of that um, lake monitoring invasive species yeah so so you guys you guys talked about this and I think kind of made a decision right when I was out one time on the on the lake coast on, on this particular one lake coast yeah mm, was there some it was some, it, it's to, to change the amount and yeah <coughs> You were here, weren't you? No, I wasn't here for that. No, that was the one that was just the two of you, and and you, the two of you, kind of came to a consensus about uh, add, creating a fund mm -hmm. uh, and uh, supporting the second site. This was going to add hours to the um, observers. Yeah, and at a and and, and the, a second site because of the infestation we experienced. They were this past yeah, they've yeah. caught several this year, which is very scary. So it's, this adds a site. Yes, but we're also or but we're also it, establishing a fund, aren't we, or is this Donna? You, yeah, that's what it says. It says to yeah. establish an expendable trust fund. Yeah. I'm sorry. And the expendable trust fund is in case we also in case we get an infestation because it costs a fortune. If we so choose, we could start to save to have money to, <clears throat> in the case that we need it for an infestation, which can oh. cost upwards of 30 grand per acre. Okay, so, so to increase the lake monitoring, yes. how much will that cost versus what it costs today? Okay, so. Uh, right now you're spending 8,000 because we give four and you give four. Yeah, it, it depends on. How much it, is the, it, the it, town it, is spending for right now? And, and the um, PLIA puts in four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plus we, yeah, and, and there's grant money as well. I mean, what we spend has been more on the order of, you know, nine-ish, depending on weather. And, yeah. You know, we obviously don't staff on rainy, rainy days yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but we need to staff the second launch, and we need to staff it at the same level that we're doing it um, so, so is it from town portion, the the town contribution to this? Does it go from four to eight, or does it go from four to we? to six, or four to five? I'm trying to figure out how much of it is going to go to 
operational costs and how because much is going to go Because the $10,000 was a separate amount of money that we were putting into this expendable fund, but I thought we also kind of raised the monitoring. Amount. Yeah, well, I think I think we were going to I think that's what this was was raising the monitoring amount, wasn't it? Chris? This this is com combining the two. The, okay. And it was my understanding of what you had left the PLI discussion with was uh, get at least to that second site and I think we were talking four for that second site so four plus four, four, four is eight. and get in the habit of setting so a little two, bit aside two was starting to set aside. right okay now that's not out of that 10? that's not detailed in here that is yeah. going to be a board of selectmen decision as needed the money sits there until the selectmen decide to spend it presumably that means PLA comes in the spring and says hey we need seven this year we need eight or we could say we need five we're, we're not going to raise any additional we're going to take the four out of the expendable trust this year and that's all we're going to do yes right yeah so that 10 will include any lake money it's not yes. like an additional four Correct. so what's to stop the town from essentially spending ten thousand dollars a year on lake monitoring only the select the selectmen. The selectmen. Of which it's none of your business. <laughs> the, 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 the flip side of that, the, the important flip side of that flexibility in is my experience. if you need to spend in a hurry, you don't have to wait till town meeting. That's the point of doing it this way. Just, where if you, I know we're if you don't have any, off. if you don't have any money in it, yeah. then you don't have anything to spend. No, and in, in, in year at year one, you probably won't have much, mm -hmm. but in year five, maybe you do. Yeah, what it also does protect you against is, say, the the funding that New Hampshire Lakes Association gets goes away, Ugh. right? And we don't get the grant money that we've been getting from them. It also gives us an opportunity to, to make up for that. I'd be really mad. Yes. They're making a lot of money off that lake. Okay. Well, just close it and they can't use it. How do you like that? We've talked about having a car break down on the, on the boat launch <laughs> road. Mm. <laughs> Sideways. Yeah, a really big car. But anyway, contingency fund. You've maybe, made your maybe, point on the contingency fund. <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, contingency fund, he made his point. That's for this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Marston, we're going to Was that consent? Was that, what, was that what that was? That was yeah, I guess that I, was. Well, I, I, apparently I don't have any say anymore, so keep going. <laughs> this is just to I give him... I think it's more that Mary wants to go through it, but she wants to go home, too. Yeah. Because it's after nine I'm just, I don't want him to waste so, his time on something that we're not going to have see, a consensus on. I don't see on. this to be the detailed discussion on these. No. Uh, Marston, you're going to provide that information yep. so Chris can yep. have something ready on Monday. Yep. Uh, operating budget, we just had that quick little road construction, highway truck capital reserve, ambulance fund, tricentennial. How much have we got in that tricentennial now? Not a whole lot. Nine. We don't put much in there. Yeah, 5000 a year. I think you got nine. Oh my God. Because you started at three. You didn't start at five. Oh. We moved it to five last year. Did we? No, it wasn't last year. So it started at three. Two years ago, maybe. Yeah. yeah. HVAC? Something that the school board does um, is include the balance of the. I like that idea. I, I like that so idea too. You guys want to consider? Can we yes. do that by law? No problem. Yes. I mean, it's very it's specific what goes in a warrant and what doesn't. Like who supports it? Who didn't? Took a no. took a um, act of Congress to get that into the warrant. I think so. if you can check it out and confirm if we can do that, I think it would be great because it's I would always love question it. number one. Yeah, it it always is. Yeah. yeah. How much do we have? Mm. HVAC. Anybody got a problem with that? I th I think we want we ought to be considering to move that to five. I just don't. I, we got to see what's in the fund, but you know when that boiler goes, we're talking. We're not talking. I don't have a problem with that. Low dollars here. Unless we have a whole lot of money in the fund, I would say five is a good figure. Chris, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we have three years of that now, yeah. maybe two. Boy, that's not much. You got six or nine. You got less than 10 grand in the damn thing. I think we're oh, that's a boiler. It's probably 30, 20, 20, 20 25 yeah. maybe. 
the social service agencies are generally the ones who ask year after year. Yeah, I'm still waiting to hear from a few there. Now, did I see did I see an email or something that you were passing us that said that Ready Rides has been being funded out of REC somehow? I have not spoken to anything about Ready Rides since I a year ready ago. Ride. I said Ready Rides Ready Rides specifically in an email that yeah. was being passed around that that it's somehow tied to REC. Wasn't that part of the? Um, it was, and I'm not sure where that came from. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was. The yeah, um, committee. Report, you're right. Yeah. They said something about it. Yep. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That's what it was. So let's make sure we're just clean on that, because if if you if you if you do ready rides, it was in the minutes, wasn't it? Isn't that where I saw it? Your breakdown in they the minutes. They referenced it in their in their report. They're, they did. And I don't, if I didn't do it, didn't they probably come out? I but saw it in. Not a, not, saw it in one of the documents I reviewed say, today. So highlight it as an example of something that benefits the town as a whole and yeah. it wasn't act is that all it was yep. but, it, but it doesn't get paid it doesn't get paid out of that funding it wasn't a great example yeah okay for that use okay mm -hmm. and yeah that's where we saw it okay uh okay thank you there's my revaluation ah. Uh, Revaluation, uh, that's a given. Yeah. I don't think we even need to discuss yeah. that. Okay. So, yeah, what's well, not listed here is the uh, highway truck, uh, sorry, fire vehicle capital reserve fund. There's, if you come out of the CIP discussion saying we want to keep doing something on that front, we're going to yeah. stick something back in there. For that. So, and the um, it's not gonna be Quint, it isn't. Donny, Don, Don. Okay. We've got an election on February 9th, too. Right? Yeah. The. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's. Yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, and put. Um, make sure the. Make sure the. February 9th is on your calendar, That's and you. Calendar. You typically. Um, Test the, the voting machine. Voting machine a week prior. Sometime before that, generally um, you're notified by somebody. Yep. Yeah, uh, there was one note from the moderator asking you to get together at that what? same time. The whole sheet. Yeah. Uh, what? It relates to the contingency fund. What relates to the contingency? He's asking about that sheet. Oh, oh, the liabilities. The compensated absences carry forward. What is that? Okay. That's our that's our liability for unpaid vacation, sick time, et cetera. Upon retirement. That's what I figured it was. Yeah, I was just putting to scale the contingency question yep. for you. Well we had that kind of pop a couple of years ago. Yes. Un unexpected. Yes. Well, not terribly unexpected, but unplanned for. We shouldn't do that again. I have, I have, I was not in favor of the contingency fund, oh, but and that you relates made a to this. Point. That relates to this. Oh, which, yes. Which one okay. is that? All right. I just wanted to see how the. Oh, okay. I'm a little punchy. Uh, I'm kind of no. rushing. While you're, yeah, while you're, while you're, while you're looking at your calendars. Yeah. Uh, the moderator has asked for a meeting of the election officers prior to the February primary, maybe you do it the same night you test the vote count machine, which is a week before the primary, mm -hmm. which is the second. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to commit to that, but uh, okay. if it really doesn't work for you, let me know sooner rather than later. It should be okay. Are either of you going to the election training? No, I wasn't planning on it. I didn't find it particularly helpful last year. No, I, no, I don't think no, so. No, we all went last year and it was more of a mess than anything else, wasn't it? Yeah. It was pretty much, I don't know, maybe, yeah. coulda, sorta, woulda, whatever. I'm sure we have a moderator who will tell us what our jobs are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm packed up and ready to go. I'll Come on, a, you can laugh at that. I'll make a motion we adjourn. 
I wanted to go in the non-public. Oh, okay, quickly. Right. that's right too. Okay. Um, I promise it only be. Please two make minutes. a motion. Make a motion that we want a non-public under RSA ninety. Oh, I can't do that. Like that. Ninety-one A colon three two. It's A parentheses A. It's personnel related. Okay. Um, I need a roll call vote. Mark. All in favor. Mark I. On aye. On an aye. Oh, I seconded it. She did. She really did. Hi, Mark. Mark. Mark said aye. Don said aye. Do you need to hear the names as well? Mark I. Mark I. <laughs> Mary I. Um, we are now in non-public folks. Um, we're just going to hear a quick personnel issue apparently and we'll come out and adjourn the meeting and there won't be any further discussion about anything unless we have to make a decision in public about the matter and it'll show in the um, minutes. Good night guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you.